you people insane? Y'all listening to the Wicked Theory Podcast. We're very happy to have you back, even for a short visit. And here we go. Broadcasting to you live from a burning attack ship on the shoulder of Orion, wistfully hoping that all these memories will not be lost like tears in the rain. This is the Wicked Theory Podcast. Whoa! Took a wow! Out of tune. <laughs> took a left turn with that one. Where? Damn, <laughs> shit. Ad, ad in the ad. house. All right. How's it going? Whoa. You just, hey. you just gotta dive into the oop sometimes. Hello, everybody. For the guy who was <laughs> not even talking to anyone, like really, before the show, you were so quiet. I'm excited. This is what happened. All right, from I'm now ready. on, no pre show for you. When you come in, do not talk. <laughs> I want this energy next time. All right. Ed, you know what? Use that energy. Do the intro. Yeah, so. Just from the top. To, welcome to the Wicked Theory Podcast. Our host is. Me. Your name? Oh, Bill Sweeney. Bill Sweeney. I'm Edward O'Hare, nicknamed to be determined. Fair enough. With us is Uncle Jay. Right. Uh-huh. And uh, Brother Bob. Hey, what's up? I don't think Jay likes the new intro style. Calm the fuck down. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs to dial it back. You want me to mellow out? You want me to mellow down? No, because I'm about to get loud. Oh, shit. Get... We don't want that. Oh, boy. We got, we, some, go. we got some smooth listening for you. Smooth? smooth. We're, we're going to dial it back? Dial it to yeah, s- smooth? Yeah, I don't know. All right. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is episode one thirty nine. Some merciful fate of wow. the Wicked Theory podcast. We mm-hmm. made it. We made it this far, folks. Yes. Somehow. Uh, what episode is it? One three nine. One three nine. Huh? One, one three. One tree. No. We three. Pro- we should probably change so that in the doc. Yeah, couple two tree dollars. A couple, a couple of twos and fews. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you know, you realize that we're like three quarters of a year into our third year. That's well, we're like more than a third into This is third. more math. I don't do right. fractions. This is on. This is in the show description. You know, you no, know, p- no sports. No politics. No math. <laughs> you don't know polynomials. No logarithms. You you talk like that in front of my mother when my mom's here, and I'll smack the crap out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Polly, what? <laughs> don't you dare! Uh, All right. No Pythagorean theorems here. You know, it's a matrices. I am so uncomfortable right now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, this is uh, yeah, episode one thirty nine, and uh, you know we're gonna get to some stuff. We're gonna we're gonna get to some uh, tiny bit of nerd news. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's an email, very high interest that w- we'll get to later on. Does um, it concern me? Kind of. Well, yeah. You, you are yeah, on the yeah, show, yeah. so yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's at least yeah. that sense. Yeah, we'll say that. We'll say that. Mm-hmm. Um, Am I labeled, and do I have to answer for something? I, you know, that's you know, you get one question. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I just need to prep. And the yeah. first one's all you really need to know. Okay. Well, well, yeah, it might not be all about you, you know. No, no, no I want to know if I need totally to answer don't, for something I've done. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, 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 okay. no, no, no. No, that's a different we, episode. We, no, everyone's used to your big mouth. All right. Yeah, no, we wouldn't, we wouldn't handle that on the show. You know, we just, we just hand you the subpoena, ask you to contact your lawyer. You know, that's. Oh, so it's like Thursday. The only time you got to worry about here is when you see plastic on the floor. <laughs> but I don't enter the building when I see that. <laughs> turn around and walk I out, turn around right? and walk the fuck out. It's a good move. All right. So, so lethal weapon, too. <laughs> <laughs> Diplomatic immunity. <laughs> all right. So uh, uh, that's all I remember from that movie. <laughs> so this is, uh, you know, episode 139. People, like, if you're listening live, because we do do this live on mm-hmm. Mixler every week, Saturday nights, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you are listening live, you still have time to send us an email if you want to. Yeah. Uh, it's podcast at wickedtheory.com. But if you're not listening live, you can send one too. Uh, podcast at wickedtheory.com. Mm-hmm. Um, also, um, looking forward to later on this episode, we've got movies for 2018. Yes. We've got a list of um, you know the stuff to keep your eye on for. Yeah. Uh, if, we, if it was every movie, it would be like 300 movies. Mm-hmm. So we've got it down to about 30. Yeah, Bill's, but, Bill's top 30. Yeah, <laughs> and we'll probably go through them basically like you're gonna see it, gonna not see it, mm-hmm. and don't get me wrong, like there's gonna be movies that like aren't on that list that are still like good movies that we'll probably end up seeing. Of course, but this is the ones that we'll probably you'll hear us talking about again this year. Yeah. So it's like, a, hey, don't forget this is coming soon, kind of thing. We got some some dates too mm-hmm. for some of these movies if people want to keep track. Um, so look forward to that. Ed DC TV report. Yes. That's a podcast you do with Sarah Netsley. 
freelance writer for EW.com. Mm -hmm. yes. And you guys talk about all kinds <coughs> of DC shows that are coming on. You guys do recaps. You do it every week. Mm -hmm. People can follow that podcast. Yeah, we d give you all the news. Any live action show based on a DC, t uh, on a DC comic, we'll, we'll cover it. This week, we had Lucifer had their, like, zero episode. We back went back and saw what these characters were doing before mm. a couple of years before the show started. The old doo -doo 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 flashback. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. You had a Star Wars review, which is a very popular DC property, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that snuck in there. Sometimes yeah. oh, other that things. Was, that, was, that was last week's episode. Well, oh, you, okay. guys, you guys are... A lot of shows are on break, so you've had these moments where it's like, okay, well, we need a little something else to talk about, maybe yeah. a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. guys got some extra time this week. Yeah, though, so that's what, right? that was, that's what we're doing th <laughs> this week, and uh, we, we go over a bunch of news, you know, stuff that happened in the news. Mm. Uh, Sarah gives some New Year's resolutions for different characters. Gotcha. And next week, yeah. in case you want to follow along with us, uh -oh. we're going to be uh, we're gonna be recapping and reviewing Freedom Fighters The Ray. Uh, the animated series on CW Seed. Oh, okay. Which, uh, which starts right after the Crisis on Earth X crossover from all the CW superhero Ooh. shows. So, uh, so yeah. So if you're all up in the middle of all that, yeah. All right. Yeah, well, yeah, that's it, cool. If if you would like it, then you understood what I just said, and right. please come checking us. Check it's us like out. Stephen King likes to say, for people who like this sort of thing, this is the sort of thing they'd like. Yeah. Very good. There we Perfect. go. Perfect. So with that, people check that out. And then also, you know what else you can check out? We're on Facebook. There's a page. There's a group. Get in it. Why not? Also. Like it and then join, right? Yes. You got to like the page and you got to join the group. This is true. This is true. <gasps> this is the best way to those are, the, those are your marching orders. Get to work, people. Fair enough. And then also, guess what? I brought the, I'm trying to bring the YouTube channel to life. Ooh. So, I saw that. So I it's did. Alive. It's alive. It's breathing. I retweeted. <laughs> Nice, very nice. And Thank I'm you. I'm very it. proud of you. Oh, thanks. And Pop. I'm gonna chime in on that bitch. Oh shit. Ooh, so shit. Um, people can check out that channel is Wicked Theory Studio, and um, you know we're gonna do a slow roll on things. Right now it's just gonna probably be me once in a while, just kind of burning off a few things mm -hmm. like that. Like okay, let me get used to. It. We're playing with the camera and the laptop and the editing software a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, so you if go. you want a little behind the scenes on what's going on with all that, <laughs> but um, and then. We'll be, we'll be doing some stuff this year on there. So keep an eye out. Subscribe to it. Wicked Theory Studio on the YouTube channels. Um, I think Agent Palmer could drop a link into the chat room for us if he's not too busy. Agent Palmer, mm -hmm. always helpful. Always very agent. The work. He's very agent-like. Mm -hmm. um, check out agentpalmer.com. Follow him on Twitter, too, if you want. Yeah. At Agent Palmer. And get in early, guys, because you get to abuse us for our poor work on the videos. If you want to give us... Send Until us we learn, you know? You, if you want to <laughs> send... Well, that's that, too. If you want to send any hate mail, <laughs> you can send it to theagentpalmer at gmail.com. Uh, that, that's true. That's true. Tr that's totally true. true. He'll take hate mail for any podcast. Yeah. This is true. This just, is absolutely just true. Just no bullets through the mm -hmm. windows. Right? I, I mean, we're not like Seven Dag. We don't tell people to send him dick pics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. you no. can if you no, want to. No, do that, too. Go ahead. I mean, <laughs> go ahead, do that. Send I him mean, all the cock pics you want. I mean, you know, but just send him yours. Don't be a pussy <laughs> and send you him somebody don't. else's yeah. dick. No, don't stop there. Send other people's. It's no, great. I'll just send a lot of yours. I'm just saying be a man about it. Don't well, be a puss. I, I, and then go, get like some but, random pe but, pic penis picture. Yeah, They'll never be able to I, verify it. See, like, I think, I think we need to establish that if you're going to send a mm -hmm. picture of someone else's dick, you need, you need consent from that person. Right, right, that, right. That picture was right. obtained. And if it's from porn, it's copyright. Remember, it's copyright. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's going to get so much dick pics tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> All right. So um, that's enough. Sausage of fest. We appreciate him still helping us out. Though. Sausage. <laughs> sausage. <laughs> that we sent all that his sausage, way. Sausage. Sausage. Um, yeah. And then uh, people, you know, if you like the last, <laughs> if you want to hear us uh, talk about The Last Jedi, we have an episode special that, hey! that came out for that. And yeah. then I'm moving right along. Okay. All right. Why are you going to ruin the most? <laughs> scared. Scared. Oof. <laughs> Fucking. Oof. Free don't forget, yeah, you know, go, 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 go check that out. There's nothing wrong with that episode. No, absolutely not. But if people, if you're into X-Files, if you're watching X-Files, you wonder what I thought about the season opener on the YouTube channel. I've got like a 12-minute video there where mm -hmm. I'm kind of throwing some random thoughts. I know Sarah Netflix had some it's thoughts on that episode. I'll send yeah. my video her way. It's, and a, see. it's a kind of like a grind your gears kind of episode. <laughs> you know what really grinds my gears? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you know what really grinds it? That chat room game. Oh, yeah. That damn Ooh. chat room game you every week. Wait, do we have a good one this week? I know, it depends. Well, uh, this, this week the hashtag is horror movies for kids. Yay! Mm. Examples include The Silence of the Munchkins and Freaky Friday the 13th. Because why not? Why not have two Jasons that are twins? <laughs> <laughs> in, in what aspect? Imagine if there was two of me. That's, uh, no, not you. 
Jason Voorhees is. But imagine if there was still a It's just as dangerous. We'll put on one on the other side where Ed is. Uh, at, least Jason, is. <laughs> at least Jason Voorhees is quiet. All right. <laughs> well, it depends. <laughs> I wouldn't make it out here alive. <laughs> no. You barely have that chance now as it is. <laughs> All right. Um... Uh, so yeah, so kids, kids in the chat room, play along, play <laughs> with that. You're right there. Yeah, <laughs> fucking like a dragon just yeah. coughed up something. Um, Ooh, I got a good one. I'm sure somebody's gonna come up with it though. Um, you can always write it down if you want to remember. Yes. Uh, all the materials are gone. Actually, a nightmare on yeah. Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> huh? A nightmare on Sesame Street. That's what I was thinking. Of. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, is, all right, there you go. It's probably already in there. Wow. That's Were you really thinking that? Yeah. Oh, that's great. actually what I was thinking of. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, so um, with that though, um, that sets up the kids in the chat room. Um, a little bit of uh, previous business to to clear up from last week's episode. Uh, yeah, yeah, and we get we got some new faces in the chat room. Oh yeah, let's see who's in it. Who's we, in got, there? we got Tom Petty. Tom Petty. Yeah. Himself. Uh, yeah. Good well, one. That's the name. Hard he's, to find. He, he's fucking free falling. Hey, Let me man. tell you. He is free falling. <laughs> good one. <laughs> hard uh, to find. I don't know how we good also, that really we, is. We got, uh, got, uh, we got lucky, Zombie John. Baby. We got Meow God. We got Wesley. Hey, oh. We got uh, Thomas K. Haven't seen him in a while. Hey, oh, Tommy K. Glad to see you back. <laughs> So uh, I found you. Oh, right, cool. Um, I all right. Found you. <laughs> now, uh, now th we have a bit of news, uh, a bit of business from last week. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Something happened last week. Yeah, last week we finally got to this other thing that we had been putting off for like five weeks. It was What's called that? Pitch vs. Pitch. If any, if there, anybody is sitting on the edge of their seat <laughs> wondering yeah. how this all went out, because if anybody remembers, Dom wasn't here for it. Bastard. He was the producer for that, so he was going to be the judge of the winner of that. And, you know, Dom's on uh, temporary hiatus. Yeah. He's on vacay, extended that's vacay. That's what he's producing. <laughs> Check us out on Patreon to hear more about that in the more recent episode of the monthlies. Uh, Patreon.com slash Wicked Theory. Um, but basically how it went was, I, like, you know, we get a title and then we come up with a pitch for a movie based on that title. Yeah, I remember that. And real loosely, I remember Ed's was... Wait, no. Mine was that it was like Michael Sarah in a really... Crazy house sitter movie gone right. wrong. Um, My was uh, Steve Buscemi going to 9/11 in India and Spain, trying to track down a woman he believes is the love of his life. Right, and this all these movies were based on the title of "I'll Be There Till May." Yes, Bob, do you remember uh, like a loose one line? What was it set up? It was time travel. It was uh, a time travel love story. Uh, May, Dece May uh, December love story. Oh, that's right. It was a whole looped fucking yeah. It was a whole around around looped around thing. thing. <laughs> right, right, right. And then uh, Jay, what uh, was the quick setup on yours? <coughs> well, it was about a guy that met a woman in a diner. Right, right, right. She gave him uh, her address to go meet her, and he gets pulled into this really fucked up crime. Uh, Oh, yeah, adventure, yeah, yeah. right? Remember right. that? Yes, yes. And he dies at the doorway. Mm. Um, what that twist? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. All right, so go um, listen to it back. I, I think it was pretty damn good. So I got a hold of Young Dom. He, oh. listen, he listened to the episode during the week, and he had to pick somebody to be the official winner on it. And um, he's giving it to fucking brother Bob. Wow. For, oh hey, for I the fucking in a while. for the time travel <laughs> looper romance. Um, <laughs> you know, um, snake base, eating yeah. its snake eating its own tail type. Uh, story, I love it. Um, I think that was a good pitch because actually it was like the one thing where I was like, all right, I think I watched maybe too much time travel stuff recently. <laughs> I don't know why I'm giving it. Like I, I, I'm digging it, but um, I mean, some of the details still have to be worked out because it like, is. Well, it's like every time travel story. Then it's <laughs> you like know what I mean? every time travel story ever done makes you feel like mm, I mean, I'm not. I got it to a point. Percent on this. I got it to a point <laughs> where I know that whatever's left can mm. be worked out. There you go. And I got most of the main details, like 80, 90 percent of it worked out. Nice. So nice. So um, congratulations, Bob. There congratulations. Go. It's been a while, thank, right? Thank we you gotta very bring much. that carousel back over on the table because it's got the bell on it. Yeah. Um yeah, bring that over. Fancy feast, darling. Uh, yeah, Ed, somebody grab that thing. We need that thing back over here. Because <coughs> it's got the pens and all that stuff in it too. So just uh, yeah. slam it anywhere you gotta slam it. There you go. Make it fit, she said. Okay, now, um, I think we're on to um, a little a little segment uh, we call uh, the news. If I if I have my uh, timing correctly. Oh yeah. Yeah. Whoa, there it goes. News o'clock. 
news o'clock, kids. The news. It so was just, the pedal was just out of reach of my foot. <laughs> <laughs> sorts, I just need my big toe. All sorts of errors in the, in the musical department this week. Nice, nice. One man band. Um, low in the mix overall. So, um, oh, does he mean me then? Yeah, probably, because my, my thing was down. <coughs> Thank you for the technical assistance, Adrian Palmer. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're in the news. Um, I see the headline here is Bale is keen on Learning joining. To fly. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got, wing? Listen, listen, don't, don't. <laughs> Because now I just want to do Tom I'm Petty jokes. All right, hold on. I, I, I got I, this. I got this. All right, you can't interrupt me, throw me off, I and then take you. the spotlight. So Christian Bale. It is your story, yeah. Has I been I yeah. Uh, approached to be in the Star Wars Han Solo film. Approached or asked by a random reporter in the show? No, no, no. Because he's got some history with Kathleen Kennedy because he was in Empire of the Sun. Fair enough. Spielberg. Mm -hmm. So they, ta they tapped him for Woody Harrelson's role. Oh, okay. And uh, he declined, but he's still keen on doing something oh, in future Star Wars. Sure, okay. So he All went right. on the record to say that it, it is true. He was approached, and he's open to do something in a Star Wars film going down. Hmm. All right. All right, so basically, he wasn't too crazy on the rule they were asking. Oh, good for you. And how was it? <laughs> a fucking Star Wars film. Is that right? We are done professionally. You think he's going to start shit on that set, too? You want me to turn your fucking lights down? Because they start talking shit about Wookiees and stuff? <laughs> fuck Chewbacca! And fuck you, Bryce! <laughs> da -da 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 -da. <laughs> I was waiting for one hard reference from that sound clip. Thank you. No, they're all no, from I know they are, but I needed uh, something to end it on. Like, uh, something to pull out on. All right, very good. It's fucking useless now, isn't it? Something about set, right? Didn't he say something about it? It was fucking uh, set, mate? I know it's fucking. Uh, nah. anyway. You fucking amateur. That's it. All right. So now, <laughs> all right, I mean, hey, if you want to do some, um, who's this? Who's good? No, this is cool. This is cool because um, Maybe, uh, he's a solid actor, man. I mean, I, I got to hand it to him. You know what I mean? We, you know, uh, American Hustle, right? Yeah. Um, right. The Fighter. You know, the stuff he did with Russell or mm -hmm. David O. Russell is great. So this is kind of cool that he has an interest in it. So it keeps it. Um, Mm. Keeps it interesting for the world of Star Wars. Keeps it all forward. very interesting, I'll say. So, uh, Neil Blomkamp, Blomkamp and Ridley Scott and both, Ridley uh, both. came through the ashes of Fox, uh, 20th Century Fox and came out at the other end in, in Disney World. Raising <laughs> like a <laughs> phoenix, you might say. Mm. Neil Blomkamp is, is um, talking about moving on from mm. his Alien 5 pitch that he did a couple years ago. Well, well, he because everybody keeps bringing it up. Fini but let me finish. Yeah. No, because he keeps bringing it up. Yeah. He's tweeting oh, all these oh, behind-the-scenes okay. shit you gotcha. that he's worked on over the last couple of years. Uh, all different projects so or I, just I, I still think he's hopeful about it. Yeah, probably. So he's probably trying to keep them, you know, uh, yeah. f keep it fresh in their minds mm. that he's going to do this. But um, Ridley Scott um, is still keen on moving forward with his third uh, Prometheus uh, prequel. All right, let's try it like this. Boys, just so you know, I've jacked the fucking volume up just because I'm getting some responses that the volume is crazy low. Oh, okay. So does it sound like it's a lot louder right now? It, it sounds does. clearer, actually. It sounds, yeah. yeah. Well, so it's that too. It's definitely louder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Wow. It, it I sounds like I am turning my headphones <laughs> down now. <laughs> We're in fucking 4K yeah. audio. Yeah. I think that's probably what it is. I think I had us down overall, so people might want to adjust their headphones. All right. So um, we were on VHS, and now we just upped the 4K Blu-ray. Yeah. We were on reel-to-reel. -reel. Okay. You know what I mean? And now we're yeah. in 4K. We were on wax cylinder from the Edison Laboratories. <laughs> I actually enjoy this. It's, it's, just like a, it's almost like I had a Vicks Vaporub nose inhaler. It's like you went to the doctor and he cleaned out your fucking air passages. No, I, feel, <laughs> I feel like I inhaled the Vicks inhaler. But, uh, nice, nice. So yeah, so uh, we don't know the future of alien movies at this point. Okay. We just, but uh, sounds like it just means that he decided to back burner this, uh, maybe even to do, to avoid start to to keep sounding like he uh, a broken record right. to other people. You know what I mean? Because then you start alienating people. Well, I think he's oh, still but I'm bum. I got it. It's <laughs> oh. an aliens joke. <laughs> no, I I think this is. I didn't even catch that. That yeah, was just. Well, yeah. I think more. This is more of a case. Is he really wanted to do this, and then yeah. when Ridley Scott wanted to do Covenant, mm -hmm. they kind of took it away from him. Um, mm. And he's still has hard feelings about it. So 
Okay, well, you, you know, know more about this. He's yeah. moving forward, but he's keeping it fresh in people's minds. <laughs> keeping it fresh. <laughs> and, I, and I really do hope he does. He gets a chance to do it because it sounds interesting. All right, all right. So, all right. So, uh, so um, you but put this. this no, I thing. got uh, I got nothing in here this week. This is yeah, uh, Gillian Ed, Anderson. Ed put this in. Oh. Gillian Anderson, American Gods. She's out. Yes. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean, we already the showrunners Brian Fuller and Michael Green stepped away a few months ago. Yeah. Right. Um, but now Gillian Anderson, who played Media, yeah, yeah, uh, who, f for my money, was probably w you know one of the best parts of that show. Well, I mean, you know, there's a lot of great parts on that show. The thing is that that's a show that is nothing but mm -hmm. great actors in it. Like you know what I mean? Like it's like everybody in there is shines. But yeah. Go on. Yeah. But yeah. that she's she's not going to be on it going forward. Okay. And that uh, Kristen Chenoweth is also considering backing away. Well, maybe things are changing behind the scenes more than we thought. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because they were both two main characters and, yeah. and storylines. Was Harvey yeah. Weinstein on the now scene? Now I'm getting scared because that <laughs> season last last season yeah. was awesome. Yeah, and it ended on a very yeah. big note for Kristen Chenoweth's character and specifically. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, you know, yeah. I don't know how it goes on. I don't know how it continues. You just recast. I mean, they are technically the characters mm -hmm. are embodiments of things. They're gods. They could just kind of write off that either one of them just looks different or it's not just, or not address it, and well, it kind of works within yeah your just your your sense of disbelief. You know what yeah, I, mean? I think I think media is easier to pull that yes. off with yes, because she was always supposed to be looking like somebody else. Yeah, yeah. She played I mean, a lot with that. Yeah, you know, I'm sure that's not a big issue for them. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it just sucks because Kristen uh, it, Chenoweth was so damn good in it. Too. She's yeah. it's such a speci she's a specific type of actress too, where mm -hmm. she like she brings a very special certain something, mm -hmm. you know, and um, yeah. and held her own too. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, all the characters in that show are excellent. Everyone here watched it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and, and the, the story is phenomenal. It's just scary now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That to hear. if yeah to hear that a main character walked off. Right after uh, there was a, a, a significant behind-the-scenes change, mm. you know, mm. this mm. as a, as a fan worries me. Yeah, and these days it's like Jay actually he meant to goof it around, but it is like what happened? Did somebody pull the penis out? You know? Yeah, Harvey like, Harvey Weinstein was uh, seen see him walking by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't have that. Can't have that. But he was packing his stuff. He was leaving. Not nope, too late. <laughs> Maybe they saw like a, a photo in their producer's office fair, fair of, of Harvey with a signature or something. Probably. All right, so now, uh, hey kids, guess what time it is? Ah, oh. <laughs> time for Animaniacs to yes. come back. Yeah. So Hulu announced this week they're giving a two-season order for new episodes. I of, love it. Of Steven Spielberg's Animaniacs. Oh, now, if they great. can maintain uh, what they had, that yeah. would be excellent. Yeah, and now yeah. it's kind of like you know. Bypassing network standards. Yeah, I'm maybe. not saying it's gonna get like you know raunchy, but it walked a yeah. line. It yeah. did walk a line. That's yeah. that, you know. Don't forget about the what was it? The cats. Hello, nurse. Oh yes. Oh, the good feathers. The yeah. pink. Uh, the pigeons. No, well, not the, I love the pigeons, but I'm I am talking about uh, hello, nurse. What was the, what were them? Uh, Yakko, Wacko, and Dot. That's right. what we're talking about. Yeah. Animaniacs. Yeah. yeah, they're the. Uh, yeah. They're, they're the raunchy ones. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know? Just close enough. The yeah. biggest and one is... Because uh, they're kind of like meant to be throwbacks to a time when people didn't care about certain things and mm -hmm. it was just okay to say certain things. Right. So they could go right into all that. Yeah. And, and, and when... And, or more or less, I mean. And it was about when like comedy really was about selling to two or like a throwback to the Warner Brothers kind of like early days yeah. of that stuff where it was about selling to two audiences at the same time mm -hmm. but like a mature audience at that second level yeah like right. you know right well, yeah. It's all Spielberg yeah mm -hmm. yeah and I mean this started in the early 90s with, with Tiny Toon Adventures which was just you know kid versions of the of the of the Looney Tunes characters right. Bugs and, all and Animaniacs was was you know three new characters yeah took it a step further where this is, these are completely new characters yeah Doing that same type of satiric bite, and um, and although Tiny Toons did um, did have some great oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, Tiny Toons had amazing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Pink, don't forget Pinky in the Brain. Oh, actually, that's my the Tiny Toons <laughs> they had a summer vacation movie. Yeah, I remember yes. that. That was incredible. That I can't find on DVD. I'll get you a copy. Oh please, that would be that would be amazing. <laughs> I, I have a laser disc. Ah, okay. Wow. Uh, oh. If he doesn't have it on anything else, he's got it on fucking Laserdisc. <laughs> at, the very, at the very least. But he's Wait. right. It's not available anywhere else. I know. But, yeah. but Laserdisc died like in 1984. But at Jay's house, it lives on. <laughs> but Animaniacs didn't come out until the 90s. <laughs> yeah, so well, how, how did they how'd they even decide to put it on Laserdisc uh, at first? Ja well, it was from Japan. No, it's from uh, Japan. Laserdisc died in 2001. Yeah. 
Well, finally, yeah. after gasping. <laughs> Listen, Jay was at the funeral. Don't, yeah, don't, don't make fun. I made the eulogy. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today <laughs> for this fucking great fucking... To reflect so, we make We make fun, but you know what? That's probably going to be the retirement fund. <laughs> Laser discs are least. still cool, man. It's still cool, man. I still no, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure it is, but I mean, you know, it's gonna. Be, I, I watch American Pickers. You see all that stuff. <laughs> the, uh, well, it all depends too. You know, laser yeah. discs right. have a have a value, sh- and they have a shelf life now. Right. It turns out. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's laser rot and shit like that, mm-hmm. but it's but again, like old vinyl, sure. a lot of people want the sleeves. They want uh, the cover. Yeah, it's about the packaging. It's all art, and it's all about that. So that's why it still lives on. All right. Mm-hmm. So anyway, kids, it's coming to Hulu. It's gonna be a little while. Mm-hmm. But there was some talk about several months ago that they were kind of kicking this around, and it mm-hmm. looked like at Netflix at first, but now it ended up at Hulu. So if you were looking yeah. for a reason, to, like Hulu almost had you, like so this is probably yeah, this gonna is get pro- you. Yeah. Well, in the meantime, go well, watch the old ones. Yes, actually, yeah. I watched a video this week, which yes. is a compilation video on YouTube of all like the more raunchy moments, mm-hmm. and it's a lot of Hello Nurse gags. It's like yeah. all the Hello Nurse gags and all this stuff, and, uh, and mm-hmm. the biggest one, if people aren't aware, is like this fingerprints joke, and just just watch. Just look up <laughs> Animaniacs fingerprints. Mm-hmm. It's the one where it's like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This is what they got away with? And wow. watch all of them. Because it's just not even like like the joke is just so blatant, and it's just like anyway. Um, watch Tiny Tunes. Yeah, Tiny Tunes is great. Worth watch too. the Good Feathers. Yeah, uh, phenomenal stuff. Yeah, yeah, Good Feathers. Um, Pinky in the Brain. Pinky in the Brain spun out of Animaniacs. What are we gonna do today? Hello, Brian. Same thing we do every night, Brian. We're going to take over the world. Peas, peas. It's all about the peas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so with that, um, that's going to wrap up the news, and then we're going to shift right into the meanwhile. 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 Ooh, that was loud in my head. All right. Um, and then I'm just going to say, hey, man, I saw Buck of Bonsai over the weekend, yeah. and I hadn't seen it since I was a kid. Oh, wow. And... It's a thing to behold in a way. I was talking to Jay before the show about it. Yeah, where what's, it's what, like what's the full title on that? Buckaroo Bonsai and the ba- <coughs> Bathroom Bettys. Let me, I don't let me, know. Let me take in the, this. In the last, you want to take my review of it? Uh, no, it's the title. Oh, the fair, oh title. fair enough. Go for it. The Adventures of Buckaroo Bonsai Across the Eighth Dimension. There, there you go. go. There you go. And that's all, and that's what you really, all you need to know. Yeah, and that's the kind of title that goes great with the word, meanwhile. (laughs) (laughs) So my point being that, like, yeah, uh, it's one of those things where it's like, uh, you know, it's it's a time capsule kind of thing. It's like some of it holds up, some of it doesn't a little bit. It's fun. It's it's because nothing pulls you out of what's going on because it's got a slight kind of camp weirdness Mm -hmm. they're going for, which helps with anything that's feeling aged. Like, you know what I mean? It just yeah. adds to the yeah. to the mystique of it. It's not like trying to watch some super serious thing that just, is like, doesn't work. You know, like, the age doesn't, you know what I mean? Um, but there is some weird editing and uh, some odd, like, just by today's standards, like, story structure choices where it's like, okay, I think I'm a little lost right now, and, and I'm not supposed to be. But anyway, Buckaroo Banzai, like, just a throwback. I think that's the beauty of that film. Though. See, I, I yeah. watch it every couple of years. Right. Because I've always loved it since right. I was a kid. You right. know what I mean? But I think it works for mm-hmm. the product that it is. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's, it's meant to be a simple fun movie. Yeah, yeah and anything that's awkward or off about it is endearing. Right. It doesn't. It's one of those movies that's lucky like that. Like, it doesn't <coughs> become, that's what I kind of mean. Like, it doesn't become, like, oh, it's... It doesn't hold up, quote unquote, kind of a thing. Like it's actually it falls into this, that other thing where it's like, it's 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 it, it's better for its age in a way. Like you know what I mean? It's it's just it's more settled into being, uh, um, like certain kinds of like the 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 stuff that didn't work then probably might feel like it works a little bit now because mm. of the the window of time in a way. And it's like, oh, look at that thing. It was adorable. Left for while you can, monkey boy. <laughs> 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 John Boutte. Um, really good performance by John Lithgow. John Lithgow, fucking who's in it. Christopher and Lloyd. What's great about this movie is it's, it's like a bunch of people and it's everybody's young. So it's Peter Weller, it's Jeff Goldblum, fucking Jonathan Banks shows up, uh, Mike Ehrmantrop from... Breaking Bad wow. and, and Better Call Saul, who looks, you know, he still looks like he wants to take a nap, but whatever. <laughs> he looks young, though. Um, right. Well, so, from Wise Guys, too. Yeah, oh yeah, from Wise Guys. 
Yeah, let's not forget Peter Weller. Well, I did. I slipped yeah, him he, in there. Yeah. Um, so also, too, I finally watched Bone Tomahawk, which was a big recommendation from Jay. Yeah. And after seeing that, I know why. <laughs> and it wasn't just because of he's got a thing for Kurt Russell. Mm-hmm. I will say it's a recommendation for me, too, as well. Um, so should I, should I see this? Because I've been, I've been very wary about seeing this movie. Yeah, I would say that like there is there is, you know, s- alert. I guess there is one <laughs> like really hard scene, mm-hmm. in a way, in a, in a, in a horror ishy kind of, it's some gru- a gruesome scene. Mm-hmm. But you know, that's what's cool about it. Like it doesn't, like you know, if you were to read to read the description on this, it would mention cannibals. But it's not like you know some cannibal Eli Roth movie where like we spent all this time watching people eat and do gruesome shit. Mm-hmm. They're more of an ominous threat. When you finally get to see them a little bit, you see a, like one or two acts, but they're quick. Mm-hmm. So all in all, I say yeah, because it's ju- it's just a good movie in general, you know. And it's like you don't have to worry about the horror being too crazy. Mm. But that said, <laughs> bravo for like pulling that <laughs> particular <laughs> trick off. I'll just leave it at that. Like bravo, bravo. Um, don't know how you did that quite so well. Um, so check out Bone Tomahawk, and I finished Van Johnson, John Claude Van Johnson, on Amazon, and uh, it was okay. It was okay. Like that pilot was pretty strong, and then the series, you know, it was all right. It was all right. I had some good laughs. I had some couple good twists, but I, I had, I've had more fun with other shows. I thought that was gonna be a little bit more fun. Um, it started to feel like they really weren't shooting for the funny, funny as much, but no, no, no. Um, so. Take it, take it, take what you will out of that, um, and I'm gonna throw it to you. All right. So I saw, I went, I, I went to the movie this week. I oh, s- good for you. Yeah, yeah. I saw Molly's Game. Okay, very good. Aaron um, Sorkin's uh, writing and directing. Yes. Double shot. His his directorial debut. Debut. And uh, it's Aaron Sorkin, and he wrote it, so it's it's Aaron Sorkin dialogue, which uh, at this point I I discovered it's. Char- two characters talking, and it's point, 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 counterpoint, tangent, over and over again. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. But it's 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 beautiful and it's fun. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, Jessica Chastain plays uh, Molly Bloom, is a real life person who yeah. ran an underground poker game mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. with a bunch of celebrities in L.A. and right. then a bunch of rich pe- rich hot shots in New York. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's three storylines at once of her developing the game and then her um, being um, indicted by the FBI right. for running the game and then her growing up as a kid mm. um, skiing and with her, re- Kevin Costner playing her really hard dad. Okay. Um, and those are weaved in beautifully. Sometimes it's a little indulgent. Um, All right. It's yeah. a first timer. Yeah. Yeah. There are, there are a couple points uh, towards the end. Where I feel like Sorkin's not really sure what to do with the camera. Okay. Um, there's one really great monologue that Idris Elba does. That's really great, but it's a little long, and it gets to the point where like we can't just have the camera on Idris Elba yeah. for for six minutes. I could see. So <laughs> I could see like, that there's, happening. There's p- long stretches where they just have the camera on somebody else. Okay. But <laughs> that's too th- long. All they're doing is listening to him talk. <laughs> I got and you, you don't yeah. get the, the reaction feel, right, 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 right. Um, but but still, it's it's a fun story, sure. and I, I definitely give this a recommendation. It's nice. a cash for me. Nice, and it's uh, it's very promising for um, if you should ever see him direct again. I guess right. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm excited to see him grow. Sure, very um, good. You know, and and it's interesting to see him let loose. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, without without with his words when they're not being filtered through uh, David Fincher or Rob Reiner. Or Mike Nichols, or one of the other um, great directors who have who have uh, used his screenplays in the past. Gotcha. <laughs> cool. All right. And, um, uh, very good. Very good. Very good. And then uh, it just says randomly Spielberg. Well, like you just want to recommend Spielberg no, no, in general. No, HBO. Hey, how about that guy? HBO put out a documentary called Spielberg. Oh, okay then. <laughs> which is about the, the life and career of Steven Spielberg. Oh, uh, wait. Why? Why is it any? Is his career any good? Uh, well, has this guy you know, done anything worthwhile? Yeah, kind of. Doubt it. And they, they touch on pretty much his whole oeuvre. 
Um, Wait, they touch his what? <laughs> his penis. That's, that's why. Right. Isn't, no, isn't, no, that, isn't that no. the place between your uh, testicles and your uh, your butthole? Yeah. There? Yeah. Sure. No, no, no. That's what no. I'm thinking. But no. in French, the, the entire breadth <laughs> of his work. Oh, 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 oh. oh. yeah. Oh. Um, well. <laughs> Okay, now why, I, why, why did you say that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I feel silly. Oh. Uh, you know, they even touch a little bit on, on Hook. Um, yeah. There's a segment on 1941. Um, I don't really, you know, uh, they, they cover pretty much all of his movies. Um, some for some for three seconds, some mm. for, you know, ten minutes. Okay. It's about a two and a half hour documentary. Um, but you get the scope of him and what he's all about. Uh, and a lot of it is interviews with him uh, throughout, and and his frequent mm. collaborators. His um, frequent yeah. collaborators. Yeah, a lot of Kathleen Kennedy, a lot of Frank Marshall in there. All right, sure. Um, you know, and it, it's it's uh, uh, if if you're a fan of his work, uh, you're definitely gonna like this. All so. right, I saw mm. this. I reviewed it on the show here. And if yeah. you're not a fan of his work, you're probably lying. Because I think, <laughs> like, you like something he's done. <laughs> like, he's, he's kind of that guy. Yeah. All right, let's move it on to Uncle Jay. Uncle Jay, you got a, a, a one thing in here I don't know and one thing I do know. Two things. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt the session. Yeah, I know. I got my booze and my, my You got pipe. your big old grandpa pipe. <laughs> All right, so uh, I... I <laughs> oh, he's in Professor J mode now. You ain't kidding. I know. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Yes, gentlemen, let me tell you a thing let about this. Let me tell you something about an extraordinary piece of celluloid mm. called Killing Gunther. <laughs> nice. You should have kept the accent for that. Uh, <laughs> Killing Gunther. Killing Gunther is um, basically a mockumentary mm. from Taron Killiam. Okay. Taron Killiam. Yeah. Taron Killiam, yes. Uh, he's from Saturday Night Live. Oh, I, okay. I love this already. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, SNL. He's an SNL alum. Um, and it's uh, basically, it's all about these uh, hitmen mm -hmm. who join forces to kill the hitman. And okay. that hitman is Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> oh, wait. I did see a trailer for this a while yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Very good. Which is a total homage to... Arnold, the action star. Gotcha. And mm -hmm. the fact is, is that, you know, he basically comes in mm -hmm. in the third act. Very good. And takes the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's funny. It's very witty. It's a lot of fun. I laughed a lot through it. It's not the greatest thing in the world. Sure, yeah, yeah. But it's so funny. Mm -hmm. And um, um, one, there's one cat, there's one actor that is from Saturday Night Live. I don't have his name in front of me right now. But, um... Uh, he plays like an arms expert. Okay. Bobby, you know I mean? Bobby Moynihan. Yeah, Bobby Moynihan. Yeah, he plays like a he plays like a, 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 sure. a bomb expert. Okay. He falls in love with one of the hit women. And okay. He, so it's all this going on, but Arnold Schwarzenegger is having so much fucking fun. Right, right. You know what I mean? And he's just and he still he still has it. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's, they save him in the tra I, in the trailer if I remember. They save him for the very last beat of the trailer. It's which is kind of like follows like the movie a little bit like you know he's in the he's in the last half hour right, right, and it's right. hilarious yeah it looked like a lot of fun uh, i forgot all about it so uh yeah that, this was a very pleasant surprise was that on a service or where did you know it that? was in, it was in the theater briefly as an in, as an independent oh okay. yeah yeah this was like a limited release uh um, but it's on blu right now oh okay so you can you can watch it you can find on that on demand and another one was a film called the big sick yeah which is uh, a, an actor... Uh, oh, I think I reviewed this a while back. K Kumail... Um, Kumail Nanjani. See, that's why I have Ed here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I felt that stall mm -hmm. from the minute you said the big sick. Because <laughs> I am in my... <laughs> like, how do I pronounce this guy's last name? I, I am in my mid-40s mm -hmm. now. Yeah, I get the Kumail. I'm not what I used to be. Right. <laughs> so I have Ed, you know, to help me with anything the Thank last God. 10 years. Thank God. Uh, but this was good. This is actually a mm -hmm. biography on on what happened to him. Basically, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's based on the true story of him and his girlfriend. How, well, his wife now. And she got sick, and mm -hmm. you know, and and that journey. Yeah. Of how he meets his parents. Ray Romano's in it. Meets uh, her parents. Right. Holly Hunter is really damn good mm -hmm. in it. Right. Um, She's getting an Oscar buzz. Yes. It's it's really it's a really good movie. And, right. And I had heard very little about it. Really. But it's okay. Streaming on Amazon Prime. Right. So if you guys have that, you know, you can watch it for free. Um, really good, very right. very good. It's a really good uh, writing job too. Yeah. So yeah. I would I would even think that should be Oscar. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. wrote it together. Him and the, him and his girl. They're both yeah. in it. They wrote em it together. Emily V. Gordon is yes. uh, is is his wife's name. True indeed. Fair enough. See see we see that Ed, see, see, we see, see that's why we have Ed. That's all begun. He's got a laptop in front of that's him. That's the only reason. I wish that was all. I wish it was all he would do was just kind of come in with anything. I have a laptop in front of me. But yeah, right. Well, you you don't even you know what I mean. We're just in the dock. Yeah, but but I'm. 
in, have a pipe in my hand, mm -hmm. a drink in the other. It makes the, yeah. makes the professor thing. You have Bill in front of me. Yeah. You, you, got got whiskey, you, got, you got two drinks in front <laughs> of you. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, you don't really have romantic comedies in theaters anymore, and this is kind of the closest you get. Yeah. IPA, I was like, I kind of prefer this. Yeah, it was um, very it was very good. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it's uh, actually a lot better than I thought. It, it would yeah. be for this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. There's there's one scene Ray Romano is talking with Camille <laughs> about about 9/11. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> great. Yeah, yeah. I've seen a couple. That's like a pop. That's like a clip they put out a lot, and the, the clip samples. Uh, talk but shows I'm, and stuff. I'm glad Ray Romano is actually coming out and doing these other different things now. Oh yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah absolutely. He's on Scorsese's radar now because yeah, he yeah, was yeah. in Vinyl. He's in The mm -hmm. Irishman coming up. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. So he's doing these really cool supporting roles, and I'm, I'm happy for him that he's... Yeah, if you can get past the Kermit the Frog voice, uh, yeah. you know... Or past you, Raymond. Yeah, I mean, for you, <laughs> you man, I mean, for most, for a lot of people. For me, it's just, it's you know, it's still going to be like, you know... Well, it's Raymond and Ice uh, Age. Hey, Ray Romano. <laughs> hey, uh, you got the cocaine? Because I'm fucking shooting. Like, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. You know, you know, but he, like, is, he is... I'm waiting uh, for him to be like, hey, ho, hey, ho. Ray, Ray <laughs> Romano here for Sesame Street News. There you go. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you know? Uh, last thing that's not on the dock that I yes. just wanted to bring up is Whoa, um, a okay. Blu-ray. Just yeah. go with it. I'm, 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 I'm going, halfway I'm going, there. I'm, I'm, I'm halfway done. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Criterion released The Breakfast Club, which and is left way field. Yeah, left out of left field wow, yeah. for them to... Because uh, Criterion is usually like the fine wine. Of, yeah. And uh, But it's just nice to see The Breakfast Club sure. on that fucking shelf. Uh, something that you probably wouldn't have thought would get that treatment. Right. right. And, it, yeah. and they really... There's a lot of great extras on there. And there's... Mm -hmm. Uh, 50 minutes of deleted and extended scenes on it. Wow. That give it that give it some extra, you Ugh, know, oomph crap. and whatnot. <laughs> All right, fine. Now, whatever. John John Hughes has passed <laughs> away. What, that's not a three-hour movie. Yeah. Yeah, because like people are gonna be like, yeah, but in a deleted scene, you know, she she, you know, tied her shoes different and then kissed the mailman, you know, whatever. It changes the whole movie. Like, you know, you're going to get that crap from people. <laughs> well, well they, not, they, not really like that. But <laughs> okay. well, you know what I mean. They, no, they, what, what thank, thank you, Badger, from Frankie Bad. <laughs> this is what happened. He released a two and a half hour I rough forgot cut. I could do a Badger. I forgot. He released it a did video. sound like Badger. Sorry. No, it's all right. I derailed your thing. I'm sorry. It's all right. No, he released a two and a half hour cut, and they said, you know, how do we bring this down to like 90 minutes? Right. So, you know, you know where that other hour went. But some of it works, and some of it doesn't. Okay, so fair enough. so I, f I feel that uh, you, you know, can see the process in it a yeah, little bit. There's a couple things he should have left in, and there's a few things mm. that he was right to take out. Mm -hmm. So um, is there a scene where they all die? Uh, yes. Oh fuck, I'm buying yes, it. Yes, because Quentin Tarantino was an <laughs> intern at the time. At the time, he was a very young intern. Yeah. So that scene at the end where they walk off, they're actually going into heaven, and when you see them earlier on the desks, they're all right. dead. They right, all committed right. suicide. Right, right, yeah, right. Do they? This <laughs> whole missing scene. <laughs> yeah, that ties, that it, ties all, it all together. together. <laughs> now, do, do they do the thing from the uh, from the It book that everyone's disappointed was not in that movie? What's the matter? Uh, the, the, the gang bang. Did they yeah. gang bang? Uh, yes. Nice. With the principal. Go criteria and the janitor and the janitor. <laughs> nice, nice. Now, now, Badger, can you tell me about all the deleted scenes I from can't Lethal? I, from I have to hear Badger. I can't just do it. Just do the voice you were just doing now. Just tell me, tell me all the scene, deleted scenes I'm from Lethal to, Weapon I'm to, I'm trying to remember. That's it. That's it. That's I it? like the Breakfast Club. <laughs> you ever, you ever watch Star Trek? Because <laughs> he's going through the whole thing about Star yeah. Trek. About a special episode. I forget how it goes. <laughs> I got If I could, if I had a clip right now to hear Badger. Oh, man. Because uh, I did it at the, at the job one day for this kid who was filling in for <laughs> yeah. the guy I work with. And I didn't even realize it was that good. And he <laughs> fucking stopped. And he was like, you have to do that all day. And I was like, I cannot do that all day. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This, so, this uh, got to be a bit now. You, I, I know. I, I have to brush I'm, up on it. Yeah, and, no, and you I'm going to name out. a movie. And I want you to tell me about all the, all the deleted scenes from that ba movie. And Badger just makes up shit, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's, it's a bit. I got to brush up on it a little bit. I just got to kind of, I haven't heard it. Just watch <laughs> season two of Breaking Bad. You'll, you'll all you got to do is find <laughs> somebody animated that thing that he does, that, that, uh, that, that dissertation he does, kind of like that 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 breakdown of the uh, mm -hmm. screenplay he's got <laughs> for a Star Trek episode or something. Right. Yeah, I remember that. He's like, you know, I, I uh, no, I need to hear it. I can't because I, I know I got like the rasp right, but like he's got mm -hmm. a weird kind of like thing I have to key on. Ed's trying to find it. All right. So, but that's no, gonna no. wrap up. Ed will find it. That's, <laughs> no, no, that's I, fair. I, I just found it. There all you right, go. All right. <laughs> save it. Save it for after show. Okay. Criterion. Or put a thumbnail. 
put a pin mm-hmm. on it. What's that? Criterion Collection just released this on Tuesday, so it's a new release. Right. Um, I'll recommend it to Chad. I know he likes to look at Criterion sure. editions, mm-hmm. but this is a really nice entry, and I'm glad they did it because it's a movie I'm fond of. Fair cool. enough. Fair enough. It's a classic. Cool. It's a, it's a, it's cool. A, it's, cool. It's a modern cool. era classic. It's a good character study of five different people and uh, how they kind of yeah. use different elements to describe each character. So. Uh, the, the final cut of it, I think, serves its purpose and cool. does what it does in 90 minutes. In 90 flats! All right, um, let's see if I got any, uh, do I have any uh, music I can use for uh, us to talk into the next segment? Hmm, hmm, hmm. hmm. Well, I hope it was worth it, because it's fucking useless now, isn't it, Bill? How about this one, Ed? <laughs> God. <laughs> That's an in-joke. All right, all right, all right, all right. Is it, isn't it about chat room time? Yes, actually, let's do that. Let's go into the chat room. Let's see what these people are, are saying. Are you people insane? They are. Um, <laughs> what do they got for us? What was the setup in the punchline yeah. on that? So end? the hashtag is, was horror movies for kids. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So we've got My Little Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh. Get Inside Out. Uh, oh, Get Inside Out. Yeah, yeah I got gotcha. you. Okay, um, I got gotcha. I know what the Pokemon did last summer. Um, uh, the last full house on the left, <coughs> Willy Wonka and the Exorcist in the Factory, <laughs> uh, the Blair Babe Project, American Toy Story. I just pictured the pig at the end, just in the corner, facing the corner, like the end of the Blair Witch. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's just how it's different. That's mm-hmm. all. That's the only thing that's different. It's still the Blair Witch, but at the end, that's when you finally get to see the pig. Yeah. It won't uh, even look at you. American Toy Story. Mm. I like it. Mm, uh, Harry Potter and the Sphere. And the Sphere. I guess, sphere. I guess just a, that. Okay, yeah. Sphere. Right. I remember it was that. a horror movie in space. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Massacre. Oh, um, that's good. Home Alone in the Dark. <laughs> that's good. That's like, that's what Home Alone. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Night of the Living Bambi. Actually, if any movie could be recut, like they do those trailers, like, you know, it's yeah. recut as a horror movie type thing, Home Alone mm-hmm. feels like perfect. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Uh, Night of the Living Bambi. Night of the Li- oh, okay. Nice. Um, Jason Goes to Sesame Street. Jason. Okay. Mm-hmm. How to Train Your Psycho. Okay. I like Scream, it. Scream, the Lego movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Puppet Master of Disguise. Mm, mm, mm. Honey, I Silence the Lambs. I like it. I like it. I'm gonna bow that. Uh, the Nightmare Before Crystal Lake. Oh, that's good. Uh, Elmo, the Jigsaw Puzzle Massacre. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Elmo, Adventures in Zombie Lands. Hey, there you go. And Uncle Jay versus Uncle Scrooge. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <coughs> Thanks for playing. That's the chat room game. That's just a little thing we do to keep the kids entertained as they mm-hmm. listen along each and every week in the chat room. Thank folks. you. Yep. Just a reminder, get in that chat room. Mixler.com slash wicked dash theory. Hang out, listen to us live. I like that I'm an answer to all these games. It's great. <coughs> that, 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 oh, that, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your factor in now. I like that. And actually, as a little reminder, did you see that Wesley um, made a little video clip? He, our, our number one fan and listener, Wesley Gaskins, he made a little video clip of, uh, he just put like the basic, our basic like stock images in he, it. I saw he did stuff a while back. I didn't well, yeah, yeah. So he just did another one uh, where it's um, the hashtag game that we played with you specifically, where it was Uncle Jay a movie. Mm-hmm. Or, <laughs> or it was Uncle Jay a. Yeah, I could think it was Uncle Jay a movie. Yeah, that was fun. And then, but uh, yeah, yeah. So it's just that whole segment of oh, us reading. Oh, he brought it back. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a, like a short clip of that whole segment oh, I'll look of for us it. reading it off. Oh, look um, Thank uh, you, I tagged you on it. I think on Facebook I tagged you on it, maybe. Wes- yes, I did. Wesley. Didn't. Wesley. All right, so um, let's try to bang this out, huh? How about that? Let's get right all up in it, and we're just going to go uh, We'll go with a little bit of this. 2018 <laughs> movies, kid. 2018. They're coming. Ooh. They're scary. These are Bill's top 30 movies to look forward to. Uh, well, I wouldn't say that they're mine. <laughs> well, you picked them. <laughs> hey, these, these are 30 movies in general that you should be looking forward to in the next year. Yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah. But not all of them, because I did leave a couple in that right. are like, hmm, you know, mm-hmm. just be wary. Um, yeah, and these are in release yeah. order. Yeah. They're in release order, and I think that the thing is that, like, basically, it's just we're going to go kind of burn through them a little mm-hmm. bit of, uh, you know, we're going to see it, going to not, maybe a little right. bit of that kind of convo. We'll stop, obviously, when yeah, we, we're we, all we've got something to cover into it. Yeah, we're all basically going to find out uh, what our favorites are going to be at, at, from this list as the year goes on. So you should listen in and... Uh, 
Shut your mouth and just and listen. All, you know, and all, all year long you can see uh, <laughs> see how you fare with your favorites. Yeah, I mean, you might even want to write somebody's dates down if that's mm -hmm. the type of thing you're into. All right, um, I got this one on here because of uh, Jay Insidious. I haven't watched any of the Insidious movies, Jay. I saw the first two. Okay. I not a fan. Not a fan. Mm -hmm. Nope. Mm -hmm. Well, I think if somebody wants to watch a haunted house movie, they should watch The Conjuring. Okay, that's because it's the same director. Okay, and mm -hmm. it's edgier. Fair enough. Uh, so that's my take on it. Right, right, right. So this next one's the last key. It's called Insidious: The Last Key. Well, let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> the key is that it should be the last. Yeah. All right, so that's in January, January fifth, right? Well, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's Friday. That's it, uh, out Definitely. now. It's out now. Dang it. All right, um, next one on this list. Now, keep in mind, like this is a list that had like a ton of movies, and yeah. so we whittled it down to pretty much like the ones we're talking about. So, but then mm -hmm. next up in February, now we're into February, Black Panther right off the top of the list. Yep. yep. Can't wait for this one, right? That first trailer, I don't need to see anything else. Yeah, I don't really. want to see anything else. Oh, I saw the second trailer, too, mm -hmm. and it just gets better. Mm -hmm. Like, each trailer is like really great, and uh, it, it, it's one of those Marvel things where, like, well, that looks like a sure hit, you yeah. know? So, <laughs> you know, so, you yeah, know. It's got all the earmarks of it right off the mm -hmm. bat. You ain't kidding. You know? Um, and this was a this is a movie this is a character that wasn't really on the radar, mm -hmm. but the response to him in the Avengers movie was so big. Or was it the Captain America movie that everyone? <laughs> I mean, he was all an Avengers movie. He was in he was in uh, Civil War. Civil War. Civil War is where he first pops right. up. That's, but, ca that's um, Captain America. But yeah, but I mean, he's always been in Marvel's um, you know big plan for everything. So right. So they, he just got pushed up big time. Yeah, this is his time. His his turn to shine. Absolutely. Um, and definitely everybody should be looking forward to this one. And um, all right. So then next up is, I thought it was a really interesting trailer, is Annihilation. Oh, yeah. 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 This is uh, Alex Garland, who also directed Ex Machina. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Yeah. And it's Natalie Portman. And um, there's uh, some really weird stuff going on in this yeah. one, man. There's yeah. some weird yeah. rainbowy kind of other place there's thing. Trans dimensional portals. There's people there's... like, you know. Mm -hmm. Wow, man! People missing because they were doing like mm -hmm. some experiment stuff. Yeah, there's... off in this area that's mm -hmm. like weird, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's all these. But no, it looks amazing. Different though. creatures. Yeah, it looks like it looks like they they've given him a budget mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and say you know do your thing and he's got a bigger canvas here. So it's interesting to see right um, uh, where where he takes this. Right. So that's mm -hmm. annihilation. Same day as game night. Which was a trailer that we watched off mic yeah, a couple we, of weeks ago, and just I, looks like a great ton of fun. Yeah, like I should not be liking it this much. Yeah, this it, is this is this is a silly movie, but it looks really funny. Like, and Rachel McAdams, man. <laughs> and, uh, do you, Jay, you were talking about the Office Party, Christmas Office Party movie, because yeah. you had just seen that. I saw and it yesterday, it, and it feels like that, like where mm -hmm. it's like this roller coaster comedy of like mm -hmm. fucked up moments. Um, so yeah, so that's one of the movies that you should keep an eye out. Game night. Um, Red Sparrow. Black Widow. <laughs> no, 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 no. Red Sparrow. Oh, Black Widow. Black Widow. Uh, no, 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 I don't know. Maybe. Hello, hello. Um, Red, Red, Red. Uh, the password is Red Sparrow. Oh, see, see, oh, see, oh. We we see your lips. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Saying Red Sparrow, right, but right. We're, we're hearing Black, Black Widow. Widow. Oh, well, <laughs> it's the Black Widow. Movie. All right, we'll just call it the Black Widow solo movie. Then. We'll just we'll just lean uh, into let me, that. Let me, t let me yeah. tell you, Jennifer Lawrence <laughs> is, is jumping on this. Yeah, and Scarlett Johansson is fucking pissed. I'm, I've got to be right. I mean, come on, like you know, pissed at somebody, like you know. Oof. So uh, yeah, so basically that's what it is. That's the situation. Jennifer Lawrence in a movie that's basically the Black Widow movie. Um, mm. You know, it's it's Russian spy, female, mm -hmm. programmed from a young age. It's got yeah. everything except superhero ness. Yeah. yeah. So somebody somewhere heard that Marvel wasn't going to be doing mm -hmm. this and said, all right, well, well let's do it. Uh, somebody start buying now her, well, her, her my the storyline for her yeah. from the comic books. My theory is that someone had a take on it, wrote a spec script mm -hmm. or something, and, you know, maybe couldn't get someone to pick it up and it's just like, fuck yeah. it, I'll just change it. You know, yeah. I'll just change seven things well, in it and we're good. It's also... It, they're they are daring Marvel to sue them. They're <laughs> yeah, daring. They're spot on. Because they know, just do it. Yeah. Do it. You want to double our box office numbers, just try. Please, <laughs> please sue us. You know what I mean? We will make twice as much money three times. Because yeah, the name is so oh, close all by the, itself. All the fans, yeah, and the fans are going to, you know, if there's any controversy at all, the fans are going to go and see this in the theater mm. about a dozen times a piece. There you go. Just so they can have uh, every frame in their yeah. brain to discuss among themselves. Yeah, and just be like, could you imagine 
if it had just been like if Marvel had just slapped, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. you know, the Marvel logo on there and just been like, you know, just redub it every time. That's what the fan dubs will be. It'll be like Red Sparrow, but every time someone says Red Sparrow, it'll be Black Widow. Like, you know, it'll just be fucking overdubbed in there. All right, so the next one here is A Wrinkle in Time, which looks pretty interesting, you know, for a, a kid movie about time travel stuff, but it's based on a book series, and um, it's DuVernay, right? I forget how to pronounce it. Ava DuVernay. Ava DuVernay. Um, and she's directing, you know, yeah, two yeah. kids in the main roles, but it's got, like, Oprah Winfrey mm -hmm. and Christopher Pine, mm -hmm. and, you know, it looks like one to keep an eye on that might be... You know, it's got some star power, and it's supposed to be got a really great story behind it. So, is this going to be the book series that kind of like becomes the next Harry Potterish kind of thing? Because nothing else has ever really landed quite yeah, like that. They're trying to fill like, the like Harry Potter Narnia yeah, yeah. void. Uh, there was a TV version yeah. of this about 15 years ago that I remember Ooh. not not being great. I, well, just um, knowing that now, <laughs> I instantly did you see my face? Yeah. Like I had a reaction, like like. <laughs> Like I smelled pepper in the room or something. Yeah, but but um, you know this is a very very popular kids yeah. book, um, and Duvernay is is changing a lot of things. Mm. Um, so I'm interested to see um, how have that die goes. Die hard fans like. Uh, well, I mean, I, I mean the big thing like ev everyone saying. Die hard fans will always be annoyed by change. Well, it, it's it's right? the basic thing where like. It, it it doesn't say what skin tone these characters are in the book, so I'm making some of them black, and Funny. people are getting upset about it. Well, that's the um, thing, right? I mean, because that's what happened with Hunger Games, right? Wasn't yeah. that like the one character really wasn't completely s mm -hmm. specified, specified a color, yeah. and then people were like, <gasps> "Oh my god!" But like, I pictured her as this in my head, so yeah. it's like, well, mm -hmm. but what does that mean? Like, come on, yeah. you know, yeah, whatever. And it's a movie. Yeah, and she's she's a great director, and this is her first big big budget movie. Yeah, come on. So. You know, she she was this close to getting Black Panther. Yeah. I think I think there right, was also yeah. a chance she was going to do Captain Marvel, mm -hmm. uh, and she took this instead. So uh, we'll see how that pans yeah. out. Mm. So um, with that, we're moving right on to Tomb Raider, mm -hmm. which is uh, you know, I don't know. I, I had some hope for it, but not as much now. Kind of dwindling. I really? Don't know. Yeah, I don't know why either. Because maybe it's just because it doesn't seem like there's a big push behind it. So maybe it's like mm. I don't know. Yeah. It, it's Alicia Vikander. Um, it looks good. It, I mean, yeah. it looks like the game, the most recent game, like the reinver uh, reinterpretation right. with the game series. I, I was going to say, I haven't played, I, again, I, because my parents didn't believe in paying for video games. I did. I was right. not raised with them as a child, so. Right, but rated but, R movies up the ass, though, right? Yeah. Okay, fair yeah. enough. That's good. Um, That's fair. Right. That's a fair trade. Well, m maybe the character still has enough cachet yeah. elsewhere in the world with this new world market it, yeah. that it's going to be something that is, is for yeah. something uh, some other country is going to. Sure. Yeah. And not necessarily us. Mm -hmm. I believe yeah. that. Much yeah. like yeah. much like the star last mm -hmm. Star Wars movie is not making any money at all in China. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, China. Yeah. <laughs> Gail, Gail yeah. Simone did a run uh, on Tomb Raider yeah. for for Dark Horse Comics. Right. I love that book, and this yeah. definitely has that kind of vibe. Yeah, um, it's definitely a more grounded thing mm -hmm. than even you know the whole Angelina Jolie thing is. But right. it's definitely taking a lot of cues from this last reinterpretation in the book, uh, in the in the game series. Um, but it looks you know. Like, it's sticking to it. It's got potential. Mm -hmm. um, it, it does. When's it coming out? We're still in February? So, well, now we're into March, March. actually. March, okay. Red so Sparrow, Wrinkle in Time, Tomb Raider, we're all yeah, March. Yeah, we should probably say the release dates when we see the movie. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, so, Tomb Raider is March 16th. Mm -hmm. Then, Pacific Rim Uprising. March 23rd. Mm. Is anybody... How are we feeling about the uh, sequel to that? I I'll watch it. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I'll watch no, I, it. I don't know if I'll go out of my way to watch it. But I'll watch I, it. I, f I liked Pacific Rim. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I didn't think it was extraordinary. It looks amazing. Anything. Story's a little thin, but it looks amazing. Yeah. But I, it, it looks like it's cool that you're d only bringing back a couple of characters. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, yeah. we have John Boyega. He's serviceable. Sure, absolutely. And um, I, it's a different director. So yeah. it'd What's be interesting. Name? Charlie Day's back, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the girl. To the Asian girl. Oh, uh, okay. Tian okay. Jing? Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Well, she has to be in it because it's got to be a tie to Asia. Yeah. But, but she was Asian in Mark. the... <laughs> well, with that movie, that better be. Yeah. But she was in the first yeah. film, too. You don't make a kaiju movie and then exclude the Asian market. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm, I'm into it. You know, I, I yeah, enjoy the big robots. I mean... Look, I'd be surprised to hear good things about it, but I think it's got potential to have good things because I feel like, you know, yeah. whatever people kind of gave the first one a hard time about about wasn't really some stuff that couldn't be fixed. Right. And it wasn't like major, major deal. It was like, as all right. Look, it's basically a Transformers movie. Right. 
with but, not much forming right. or transing. Right, but it, yeah. as long as they can do, uh, as long as they can stay on their storyline, yeah, and then they'll out Bay Michael Bay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually believe that um, this was a concept that was very popular in the late '80s by taking the big robots well, sure. and pinning them oh, yeah. in, in like kind of a war, <clears throat> like robot jocks. Yeah, yeah, uh, which was a very small scale, yeah. but they still took that. There's a couple yeah. other. There's one called Crash and Burn. Sure. And just stuck kaiju in it, yeah, yeah. which I thought was a cool yeah, yeah. concept. They, right. did, they touched a little bit on it with Godzilla versus Megalon, sure. which had the uh, Jet Jaguar. Yo, man, they touched on it with Godzilla versus mm -hmm. Ultraman, but we ain't got time to go or that far back. Or the Mecha Godzilla. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's all it's all man in suit. What, what I'm saying is that yeah. I think th this is a big Hollywood version of that kind of thing. Absolutely. Um, my problem with the first film was that a lot of it was dark, and you really couldn't see the kaijus. Yeah, yeah they did a lot well. of nighttimey stuff, you know. So, uh, and yeah. I think that already by the trailer, it looks like they fixed it. Yeah, they, mm. they're kind of like, we got some daytime. So, um, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I'll see this. All right, so, I'm, mm -hmm. so that's March 23rd. And then at the end of the month, March 30th, we got Ready Player One, which I am ready for. Yep. <laughs> I've read that book. Steven mm -hmm. Spielberg is directing what oh, is basically a sci-fi movie in a post-apocalyptic world where everybody is basically spending all their time in a giant um, MMO type online universe. So you're all <laughs> avatars and shit, but it's, but it's like everybody's there. It's, it's just mm -hmm. like this thing that kind of grew out of control and everybody's there. But it's just loaded, filled with 80s references and stuff like that. It's very much um, Willy Wonka meets the Matrix. Especially because there's mm -hmm. a big scavenger hunt kind of thing that goes on. Right. Um, it seems like they've streamlined for the movie a little bit. So it's very inter be very interesting to see um, not just the changes because the guy who wrote the book was involved in it. Yeah. But because the book takes like a lot of this pop culture, 80s nostalgia references that it's loaded with from everything. So right. now that it's specifically to one um, yeah. movie house, you know what I mean, and, and Spielberg's involved, because Spielberg supposedly was apprehensive about using references to his own past material because he didn't want to be too self-referential, that's like not his thing, that's like uncomfortable, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but he got talked into it a little bit more because it's like, yeah, but like... Like what, Back to the Future? Like Back to the Future, right, right. and like sometimes the vehicles people are using in this mm -hmm. world that you see because... Mm -hmm. 90% of the movie is going to be in this world. Is the truck from Duel in there? Most likely. Like the A-Team van pops up. The bike from Akira, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and all those kinds of s stuff. But um, it'll be interesting to see how this plays overall. Because it seems like a lot of these visual references, at least in the trailer, go by so right. fast. I don't know how much you could possibly absorb in one sitting. <laughs> and not feel like, wow, like do I have to watch this 20 times? Well, just to yeah. kind of pick out... Like these quick, quick one second references. Right. Well, you know? it definitely sounds like uh, something that the, uh, the production company keyed in on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right away, because this this book hasn't been out for all that long. Right? No, it, it's been out for a few years, but like the bidding war started before it got published. Oh, kind like, of a thing. oh really? And like it got the movie deal before it fucking mm -hmm. got it wasn't even finished. Yeah. Well, before it hit the publish. Right. Well, then um, there you go. There's there's this, all the signs that point to everyone sees the money in this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, they've, you know, yeah. but. Uh, moving right along, so that's March 30th, and now into April, which does, which only has two real uh, ones where we're going to mention here, but it's Rampage, based on the video game from way back in the days, starring The Rock. And this video game was the one where you basically were like climbing up the side of a building like King Kong. And, 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 and smashing the walls. Yeah, or a giant lizard. <coughs> and just the whole point was to do as much damage as possible and yeah. go to the next level. And you just basically just you mm -hmm. punched the, the walls like freaking... Jack Dempsey punches, used to straight on yeah. punch like Fighting right. Irish. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, the Fighting Irish logo straight on. And I, I want to go with Bob to see that. Yeah, there you go. Cause <laughs> I, cause I think, because yeah. I played this game. I played a lot of this and, game, and too. This, and this looks yeah, like a fun this, time. Well, this yeah. just sounds like it's going to be the next star. What, what was the other one we were talking about with the robots? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's what, you know what that, I mean? yeah, that's what this is all kind of spun out from. Yeah. So it's Whoa. like, how, we have fun with that and kind of parody all of the giant uh, monster movies, like, right. you know? Cool. Um, so but is, it was a werewolf. is Pac Man going to be there? No, like, no, no, no. It's just <laughs> Rampage. But it's. Um, Power Pellets! But it's the, it's the wolf, it's the lizard, and King Kong. King, King Kong, yeah. But uh, someone reminded me that, or pointed out online, a lot of people pointing out, well, yeah, but the wolf was a, per was a human. 
Because when you shot him enough, he shrank down into a person, fell, and then died. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. The other two right. were just straight up monsters, monsters. Right. But the like the wolf too. was actually a right. werewolf. Wow. So um, I guess that's going to be The Rock. <laughs> well, The Rock is definitely the main guy, though. You know, he's basically the guy he was in whatever that earthquake movie is. Listen, you know? th this looks like something <laughs> where you just sit down and just enjoy yourself. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is a romp. This, this, this is an yeah, action this is, romp. This is a summer movie. That's and, all it is. And they got the right yeah. people in it, too. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know absolutely. I mean? Jeffrey yeah. Dean Morgan's in it, too. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, Cloverfield 3 has just announced, actually, yeah. that it's coming out the same day. Cash! Um, now, is it going to be Clo Cloverfield 3? We don't really know. That's the thing with the Cloverfield movies. Like, they sneak attack you with them. It's like, hey, it's coming next month. And I like that. Yeah, absolutely. It's like under the radar. It goes mm -hmm. against, like, the whole system thing. And, hey... Like, you can say what you want about them, but they don't, you know, they don't overshoot the mark. Like, you know, it's, 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 it's a, like, you can say that they're not that amazing or great or whatever, like, you know what I mean? But that's what they're going for. They're going for small, structure, horror-y, sci-fi-ish type things. Yeah. Yeah, like, but we do know some of the cast in here. All right, what do we got? Uh, we got Elizabeth Debicki. Don't da know. Daniel Brühl don't from uh, Inglor yes, Inglorious Bastards. He was the, he was the German soldier. Oh yeah. Um, okay. uh, the Who's in uh, Rush. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I do know him. I do know him. Yeah, uh, Chris O'Dowd. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Gugu Mbatha Raw and David Oyelowo. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So you, you got a, you got a solid cast in you here. Got, you got some good peeps in there. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but it's one of those you got to wait and see because like really don't even know what it's about. Uh, how much of it's because the yeah. last one with John Goodman was like tangentially in a way. Yeah. Not directly, like in any mm -hmm. way related to the alien biz. Stuff spoiler, that you know, was an Oscar nomination that should have fucking happened. Yeah, yeah, that was Fuck Mahishala Ali uh, and his fucking moonlight. Bullshit. Uh, I won't say about competition, but as far as that performance goes, it was pretty good. But he didn't, he didn't, for me anyway, he didn't, you know, uh, that's debatable. It is, it is, mm -hmm. totally is. I'll agree with that. 16 Candles, it was your favorite movie. All right, mm -hmm. right maybe we'll watch it again. <laughs> all right, so, um, with that, let's uh, just we'll, we'll go to something we can all agree on. All right, how about that? And probably not take too much time on because this is like where we are. A third of our fucking podcast is oh, yeah, yeah. Avengers Infinity War. Yeah, Avengers Infinity War. I don't know. Have you heard of it? It's an independent film. Yeah, small. Yeah. Yeah. Small yeah. thing. Low budget. Yeah. Little. Steven Soderbergh, I think, is the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that Very was, short. I heard it's really, really short film. Yeah, 48 minutes. Yeah. Mostly credits. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> got like a, it's like a big tribute to Saul yeah. Bass. It's got like three. And it's, <laughs> and it's got like. <laughs> I knew I'd get these guys with that one. I knew I'd get the movie guys with my Saul Bass joke. <laughs> Paralyzed them. Created the best Warner Brothers label. Got to say it. <laughs> I get myself. Saul Bass was he was responsible for doing the Warner Brothers <laughs> label. No, you know what I'm talking about. I know the what you're circle talking about. with the with the with three the weird, lines with the weird yeah. WB that looks weird. And they weird. still use it for every mm -hmm. fucking yeah. album right. that yeah, Warner yeah. Brothers produces. It's always small yeah. on the bottom. It's like the, I for some reason associated with Dukes of Hazard. I don't know why. Dukes, 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 Dukes. <laughs> All right. All right. So anyway, uh, enough enough Cletus. <laughs> Roscoe P. Coltrane. His, okay. ver his Vertigo poster is like <laughs> Saul Bass. We're back to Saul Bass. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> Infinity War, Part One, Part Un of Avengers, May Fourth. May the Fourth be with you on that day. Yeah. Um. Oddly enough. Um. Mm -hmm. Marvel's, are they really going to go against themselves that month? Because the next movie on May 25th in here is a solo. It's enough story. time. It's no, a Star it's Wars story. Three weeks. That's all we need. Three that's weeks. true. We're, it's 2018. Yeah. We don't need to. We ain't got yeah. time. We ain't got time to bleed. Yeah. All right. I got you. I got you. Yeah, I know. It's all about the opening weeks. Well, that's what well, I mean. Also, but it's it's, it's, it's yeah. the same studio, basically. Well, so we got to own Memorial Day, man. You gotta own the fucking month yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah. They are gonna own the month with that. I mean, come yeah. on, the next fucking two months, Polly. That's gonna be the only two. Th like, if you if you go to the theater, maybe this is their plan. If you go to the theater for fucking Solo and it's sold out, and you haven't seen Infinity War, you're going to see Infinity War mm -hmm. that night, mm -hmm. right? I mean, come on. Yeah. You know, not that anybody just rolls up to a movie theater anymore. I don't think though. <laughs> Does anybody still just kind of pop up to a movie theater like, oh, let me see what I'm gonna? No, you come pre-planned now. Only you your know grandpa. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> be honest. That's how I do. That's um, how I do it. Speak, see, that's, Bob was right. Grandpas. Mm -hmm. That's why I never. That's why I never call you guys to go to the movies with me because it's oh, always like a old, win decision. Because you're old and you're seventy-five. I'm my own grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But anyway, Infinity War. If you haven't heard of it, it's about this war that just won't stop. 
this this infinite kind of war. Yeah, it just goes on and on and on, my friend. I mean, so so much that the guy who started his face has gone purple. Well, you must you know? go on forever because yeah. it's a million it's people. It's got wrinkly, too. There's a million people in it. <clears throat> in 1990, mm. there was a little run called Marvel put out called the Infinity Gauntlet. Oh, okay. So mm. maybe you guys want to check that out. And give it a nice little read because it was very good. Well, and that's we're what we're this getting, is based we're, on. We're getting a history lesson here. I like that. I like that. I'm just like saying that. because uh, oh, there's right. going to be a lot of people mm -hmm. that are younger than that fucking oh, book. Oh, my God. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And they're not going to know shit from Shine Owens. No, no. But. You know what? Let them because then it's going to blow their mind even more. Right. Yeah, because they'll read that book and be like, wow, this is. Yeah. yeah, there was no time for all this. Yeah. <laughs> like when you go After you see the movie and you're blown away, go look, go to the comic book store because they'll still have those issues. If they'll probably be in the uh, 28th mm -hmm. or 29th run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know. But uh, you'll you be can able get the to giant hardcover that's like a 300 yeah. page tome. Well, listen, I said it before and I said mm -hmm. it and I'll say it again. When that book dropped in 90, I remember I was still kind of yeah. in the books at that sure, time. Sure, me too. And I even said this would make. A great fucking movie. Yeah, of course. If they ever had the balls, and now it's here, and that gives me chills. A little bit. Yeah, no. And they're gonna uh, own Hollywood. Oh yes, exactly. By the time uh, Avengers Four is done, they're gonna basically own Hollywood. Oh yeah, pretty much. Because pretty much after that, they're gonna have to find what thirty more people to take on the roles of the next group. Could be. Could so be. Now they're gonna have a total of like sixty actors that are like gonna be totally in love with Marvel. You know what I mean? It's just right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's it's like I don't. Yeah. I, don't know. I, yeah. th I think they'll have the money to pay anybody anything they want at that point. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like, like, oh, Robert Downey, you're going to try and hold that again? What do you want, a billion? Okay, fuck it. We'll give you a billion. Now, <laughs> I, I will say. You can't leave. And <laughs> I, I know this isn't going to happen. Right, right, right. But could you imagine if it's not good? Wow. <laughs> could you imagine if that finally, like, the thing that tanks is the big fucking. Big finale. The big thing we've been working towards. Oh, my God. How horrible Well, you can't would that really be? judge it because this is part one of something. Oh. oh. I mean, oh, that's, that's all the fanboys wow. will say. Jay's got a good point. I have to shut the youngsters down when I can. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. because it's just yeah. gonna this all this all is gonna lead into the next story. Right, right, right. Yeah, because I was I was because I was gonna say like the the reason you haven't seen a lot of these is because they tried mm -hmm. it in the forties mm -hmm. with a movie called House of Frankenstein. Yeah, but that was a hundred years ago. They put yeah, all I mean, the Universal on. monsters, yeah, and on. that no. was that was the beginning of the end. I don't know. Well, so. well like, I don't know. That was like, yeah, I don't know, buddy. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. What I'm saying, like, that's, like, that's, that's like, me doing an like of me. If, if you go back to, <laughs> if you go back to why it took us, it took us 60 years, right, right, to get an Avengers movie, yeah, it's because they, tr I, I it, crippled Jay, yeah, <laughs> because on. the other time when they tried to take all these popular movies and right. put them together, no, yeah, yeah, didn't really work. <laughs> no, I get you, but that's not yeah. a fair oh, no. barometer to measure by. Yeah. I know you're kind of being a little tongue yeah, cheeky. No, with that. no, no, yeah. no, no, no. You're being a little cheeky. Yeah. You're being a little cheeky. No, well, it's it's gonna, gonna, it's just gonna be just a little bit. <laughs> no, it's gonna be great. You have your own podcast to do shit like that. Yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> Jay, you don't have the patience let for that. The, let the older guys. Yeah, no, no. I, I like how it's like, no, it's gonna be great. No, I mean, well, I'm sitting here like, ah. Like ninety percent. No, 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 no. I don't know, pal. Fifty, maybe. No, That's gonna no, be we'll my see. new ringtone. Yeah. I'm gonna find that bit. <laughs> it's gonna be my ringtone. I don't know. I don't know. That'd be a good ringtone when somebody calls. Like you put on someone specific. Like yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna pick this up. I don't know. All right. It's got just working. Enough. Just I'm not even drinking. I probably should. I'm all right. Drinking. I know. No, no, no. Yeah. Have Give a snort with me. me. All right. All right. All right. For, for old times' sake. Mm -hmm. You creep. All right. So then, like like I said, the same month, Solo, a Star Wars story comes out, mm -hmm. and we all know that that is, you know, the Han Solo, like, you know, beach blanket bingo movie, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, you know, it's like, I don't know, man. It's like, you know, it's his version of One of uh, one Crazy Summer or some shit. Like, they have to save the rec center or something. Like, you know, Listen, it's they have to save yeah. the Millennium Falcon, yeah. I bet you. It's the whole thrust of that story. It's like, oh, I got this ship, and it gets taken away from him right away. Uh, yeah, but that was something that was cool a cool element in the backstory of Star Wars that people would always talked about and would like to see. So spike now we're that, gonna get spike that drink a little a little firmly. Yeah, I have to. I just <laughs> scotch is working today, boy. Oof, thanks for putting it right on me. Salute. Muchas gracias. Um That sounded like we 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 Newton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all week I'll be here all weekend. Um singing, Bill. singing great songs. Great you're, songs all You're weekend. a drag. <laughs> Wayne <laughs> Newton songs. <laughs> Who do, hey, how are you? You, don't, you don't even know a single one, do you? I definitely do not. Dr. Shane. Dr. Shane. So, yeah, Star Wars uh, Solo, the Han Solo film, Ron Howard, it's going to be great. Yes, I agree with all that. Mm -hmm. 
it's going to make I, I agree, 98.6%. So it now it brings back into the fact that if you want to go to see Deadpool, and yes. that's sold out, Whoa. you're going to go see Star Wars. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so everybody's going to be in bed with each other Very and good. making a lot of yep. fucking money. Uh, so much money going on in the, in the old Disney Fox family now. Yay. Mm -hmm. Right into June. Right it, into June. All right, so, so Deadpool 2. Oof, he's yeah. hoping it lives up to the uh, hype and the expectations. With Thanos. Yeah. I'm sorry, uh, the Cable. <laughs> cable. Cable. With Brolin. Brolin's just owning it all now. Mm -hmm. I think he's like, all right, guys, yeah. can you just roll it, put it into one check? Okay, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, it's just, yeah, can I get just one can check you just add the two totals and put them on one check? I mean, I want to see, like, big numbers. I just feel guilty about the paper waste. All right, I so. want the DCT report to do a review on Jonah Hex. Okay. All right, when, <laughs> when these movies drop. Oh, when these movies drop. Right, yeah, right, when these movies you drop. You want to do a review with Jonah Hex. Yes, I want to like, all right. Well, a proper yeah. review of that. Oh. I think you're going to have to send, you should send in an email at the very least. Lacey just to kinda, you know, just to kind of puff it up. Is you know? Lacey Chabert the girl in that movie? No, it's Megan Fox. It's Megan Fox? It's oh. Jaybert. First of all, yeah, it's Jaybert. she still look like Megan Fox? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> still nice right. to look at. So, anyway, Deadpool yeah. 2 is coming. Question for me is... Will it own up? Will they have... Yeah, will it hold up? How, have they kind of maybe done anything because of, uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Um, T.J. Miller? T.J. Miller kind of had a moment there where he turned into Persona Non Grata. I, I saw, I saw a, uh, an interview with Laura Schuler Donner okay, uh, she was today, like, and she was saying it's too late to do that. We're already in final editing. Right, because I think they're kind of like... When we're not Ridley Scott. And supposedly, like, you know... <laughs> he's not in it? Uh, from his side of that whole uh, ordeal mm -hmm. that he went through with some accusations, like, yeah. th you know, him and his wife... Have been together since their college days, mm -hmm. and it turns out that chick was some kind of problem back in the days. So there's obviously whether he's lying about it or not to some degrees or whatnot. Mm -hmm. There's some history with that that lady who's well, making the accusations to them. So it feels like some mm -hmm. some murky. That yeah. he may not be all bad. Yeah, in that. yeah. Well, he's he's saying that she comes out every couple of years and yeah. does this. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't know. That I don't could know be what convenient that means. retro spinning too. I get it, but. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I, that's what I was curious about, if they were going to do any kind of like, you know, because you can't really yeah. say you can't replace somebody now because of the whole Kevin Spacey thing yeah. with what's his name. Granted, the screen amount of screen time is probably different, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of solo stuff or shot with one person, you know. Yeah, although I, I got to say, I saw that movie, <laughs> mm -hmm. All the Money in the World, I didn't review it, right. you know, but... He's in pretty much the whole first act. There's okay. a lot of stuff in that movie that he's in yeah, and that right. they reshot. Well, anyway, no. um, and only one part where I could tell it was a face replacement. But I tell you so. why. No, you know what? But that plum but plumber dude, mm -hmm. he's a professional. Yeah. He probably did that like in an afternoon. Yeah. He's like, well, all right, we're we'll mm -hmm. there one day. Was right. it nine days? Nine days. They shot all his stuff, right? That's yeah. cake. All his replacement yeah. material. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. Speaking of cake, you know what everybody loves? Those Ocean's Eleven movies. Yep. You know what everybody was asking for? An Ocean's Eight? Yes, with, with women. Yeah. With ladies and yeah. like just like the best chicks in Hollywood. Yeah, it's Danny's little sister. Is that what it is? Is that yeah. the connection? Yeah. Oh, so you know you're getting a Clooney fucking pop-up. Well, right? they're, they're saying Matt Damon may do a cameo. Oh, all right, all right. Is but Ocean's Sandra Eight, Bullock? Sandra Bullock. And trailer doesn't look that bad. I'm intrigued. I'm very intrigued. Like, I know it probably will get an easy dismissal from a lot of fucking people that's being, that's, you know, no, cashing no. in and, mm. and gender flipping. But, you know, as that stuff goes usually anyway. She draws an audience. Though. She draws an audience. And mm -hmm. I'm more interested because of the feel and the flavor of the Ocean's movies. Yeah. If that translates somehow into this. Because I feel like a actual personality of a movie, of a film, mm -hmm. uh, is usually missing from some of these heist films anyway. Yeah. From these female-led ones. You know, I don't know. I, I could see it being good. You know what? I'm a sucker for a good heist movie. We'll see. I, I love all of those staying yeah. all the oceans movies. Mm -hmm. So I'm 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 gonna watch this and and even if it's bad, I'm still gonna eat it up. This one might steal your heart. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, well, Sandra Bullock's so, been so stealing my heart. So Ed's already giving an Oscar nod. <laughs> sure. Um, Sandra Bullock's been stealing my heart for many years. Oh yeah. Yeah. I bet. Since uh, since you got that poster of Bright Side, right? Or, or Dem Demolition Man. Gotcha. Yeah. And Gravity actually came in a good time for her. Well, that was that's just an incredible performance and an incredible mm -hmm. movie. I bet you made up all kinds of things in your head of what those clamshells were really for. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> Steal book. I don't even know what that means. All right, so let's move <laughs> along. Incredibles 2. The one movie that you wanted a sequel to, well, uh, well people wanted a sequel to, that 12 years ago. not getting for the longest time. Oh, my God. It's an ambush. Uh -oh. 
It's a sneak. You got Someone kicked out of school. Someone call 911. You got kicked out of school already? Kylo Ren just walked in. <laughs> Dom Tory <laughs> snuck in the building. <laughs> Sound the alarm. And, and we don't have another mic. And that's it. We're done, skis. All right. So um, he's you're just going to hang. You're sharing with Ed. Actually, I'm going to get up and give this guy a hug. Oh. Oh. It's my brother. Just, just so you know, folks, Jay is the official hugger of the of the podcast. <laughs> Confident enough in my sexuality. Yeah, be careful there, Jay. You might shatter him. He just came in from like zero degrees. Nothing about sexuality. <laughs> <laughs> no, I made it a thing. Whose glasses are these? Yeah, he these had are yours? He, he had an extra. Oh, these are Bob's. Oh, okay. Whose glasses are those? I like the. Uh, well, yeah, because when I'm at. Well, these are my work glasses. Okay. So, Mr. Roper on fucking oh yeah, I do a lot Sesame of, Street had the same I do a glasses. lot of writing sometimes, and I have That's to have the glasses out all the time. Mr. All right. Roper. <laughs> I believe you. All right, so. Hey, Dom, I know you want Incredibles too. I do. All right. In the middle of news right now? Yeah, do, well, no, we're doing a, a 2018 movies rundown. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we're up to uh, June. Yeah, so we're about halfway done. We're in June. It's smoking here, right? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so Incredibles 2 is finally coming out. We've got another Jurassic World movie coming if you're into that. Send it back. Yeah. It's yeah. going to make a shit mm. ton of money. Yeah, that's just yeah. one of those. Yeah, that's what it is. It's one of the few things Universal really has that's definitely a cash cow. Yeah. Yeah. So they're milking it. Yeah. Um, I'll check it out. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Okay, Sicario yeah. 2. Soldado. I'm ready for Soldado. that. I'm so yeah. ready for yeah. that. Yeah. I saw the trailer for it. Yeah. I'm psyched. Yeah, me too. I want, I want some of that. Um, I want me some of that, yo. If you were going to make a sequel about any of those characters, they got the right character to make the fucking sequel. Yeah. Because he's just awesome. Yeah. The and that's the, that's the only real direction you could, could go anyway. Um, but also, hey, here's, here's one that's going to be a local favorite. The Purge, the island, is supposedly coming July 4th. Um, story takes place on Staten Island. Uh, I don't know if anybody's aware, but that's where we're from. <laughs> and um, supposedly uh, it's filming on, he on the island, too. But it's Really? I haven't well, I guess, seen or I guess, heard. I guess we have to Purge? see that. Yeah, I mean, I haven't, I don't know. I haven't seen and or heard of anything happening. Whatever it ends up being, we need to figure out the best way to trash or or, or, <laughs> or have fun with the the places that they use to shoot. Because we're going to know mm -hmm. just about everywhere. Fair enough. So um, we should be able to have fun with that when we review it. So with that, uh, we'll be keeping an eye hey on it. Hey, guys. Hey. Yeah. Hi. Hey. They let me have a mic for two seconds. Mm -hmm. So hi. The audience says, hey. No, Tom I'm was desperate so for airtime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back, motherfuckers. Um, I drove all the way down here just to say hi. So that's uh, this is uh, in June, and then we're into July with the Purge Island thing. Um, Ant Man and the Wasp is coming in July. On, all right, uh, the that's, that, that I'm expecting. Is it the same director? <laughs> I don't know if it's the same guy from the last one. Because he did a good job. He went. He's the guy who he he went to them with, with that one, right? Yeah. No. No. Well, it, it's well, it's Peyton Reed. Peyton Reed um, took Peyton over Reed. for the guy who. Yeah. who Brought it to Marvel. Okay. Yeah, it was cause it was going to be I, Edgar Wright. They got hit the Baby Driver. Um, okay. Yeah, and he did uh, Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. Um, there you go. All right, so he hasn't done anything bad at all. <laughs> Those are three good movies. Yeah, Edgar Wright. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so Ant Man and the Wasp that's coming along. Um, we watched. We talked a little bit about it. I don't know. Attila, uh, Battle Angel. Alita. Alita, Alita Battle Angel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that, a, a that actually looks pretty interesting. Yeah. It's definitely going to be different. That does look cool. Yeah, it's got a nice look. Yeah. Definitely yeah. got a nice look. A very anime-inspired mm -hmm. look. Totally. Yeah, Robert Rodriguez has been getting a bad rap lately, um, and I don't think it's deserved. Uh, oh, okay. I, you I want to uh, I think, get I think, a petition going or something? I think he's made some. I think, you know, he's been a little hit or miss at times, okay. but I, I, I want to give him a chance on this. And, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, James Cameron picked him. Yeah, um, this was a James Cameron baby project that he kind of was pushing off forever. It is yeah. is a manga adaptation, um, yeah, and so. um, it and shows. It shows. Yeah. It seems like a good combination between uh, Rodriguez yeah, and Cameron. And, yeah, and you know if Cameron is going to be I involved in some, and he's going to have his hands in it. It's mm. not just going to be Rodriguez. All up in it, yo. So um, another Mission Impossible, uh, number six. Number six. Um, Piss. <laughs> when is he gonna finish this mission? I don't get it. How long is the mission? But it's it's impossible. That's ah, why he keeps nah, doing man. it. Fair enough. Let it me, never ends. Let gotcha. me <laughs> let me tell you some. Mission Impossible four and five. Yeah. I think are the high points of that series. Sure. Um, I think it's it's three is good too. 
Three's good. They're all good. They're all they're, pretty they're, good. They're all good. Like, Ghost Protocol, to me, feels the most like the classic TV show. Mm, okay. Um, they, they got that vibe down right, mm. and I think Five mm. was good. And this is, this is the first time a director's doing his second Mission Impossible movie. So Christopher McQuarrie, who did Rogue Nation, is coming back for this one. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um, Uh-oh. Well, that, maybe that's going to be the death spell, you know, <laughs> because like, they've never done that before. I don't know, and uh, I don't know what are you gonna. I, what? I I I need to see I need to see what Henry Cavill does with this mustache, and whether it was really necessary for him to have it. It was such a big deal. Yeah, yeah. And maybe maybe it's plot point. Maybe there's a plot point to the mustache. Maybe he's got something hidden in there. It's Mission Impossible, bro. <clears throat> maybe it's alive. That's what I mean. Like these guys, they peel off and hide microchips. In yeah, places really. And I'm just thinking. Gee, that thing was so bushy. You could definitely hide a pin camera. You know what I mean? Maybe uh, it's a caterpillar. Maybe it won't it, come it, off. Maybe it explodes. <laughs> maybe it explodes. There you go. Maybe he pulls it off. And he throws it like a batarang. Yeah. Um, anyway, okay. Um, yeah. The it's Predator. A... With cash, cash, cash. With Shane yeah, Black yeah. at the helm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Writing and directing? Uh, sharing the writing credit with Fred yeah. Decker, who was his guy yeah. uh, from years ago. With, sure. Um, uh, I want to say it was uh, the Monster Squad. Sure. Sure. Uh, is uh, is Adrian Brody involved? Yeah. No. No. No, no, no. Okay. So, but Shane That's Black... Is uh, Hawkins and Predator in the original? The first guy, you know. Go. Um, little do people maybe know. Like, you know, he's been a screenwriter for a long time. He was also an actor. He had a, he had some uh, he's scripts. Been and yeah. um, Joel Silver gave him a stint in Predator and produced Lethal Weapon for him. Yeah, he's uh, no stranger to the biz. So uh, this is in decent hands. It's mm-hmm. all a question of mm-hmm. what is the angle, kind of a thing. Like, because all it's these been pro- very hush hush. Yeah, I saw a thing. Um, that looked like it, you know, um, could deal with some guys who are like in a kind of like they're a little bit older. They're in a group of guys who, uh, um, uh, like, uh, veteran, they go to veterans meetings and stuff, a little bit of PTSD <coughs> kind of meetings, things. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like a couple of them had encountered it and survived or something like this or right. whatever. And then they kind of get pulled into a thing a little bit. Is kind of maybe the setup on that. That's the rumor I saw. The thing about Predator and, and Predator 2 is that usually they're att- the Predators are attracted to big time warfare. Yeah. Like, for right. instance, the yes. Colombian drug mm-hmm. war, and then there was a um, another drug trafficking thing going on in Los Angeles, the right. Danny Glover one. Yeah. And then in the third one, they were pulled onto their planet, which was a great uh, story arc. Mm for this franchise mm. be interesting to see what they do here because yeah. this sounds a little more grounded yeah yeah, yeah. you know it's it's funny is uh in predators the, thir- the third one which robert rodriguez directed yes uh, incidentally. no he didn't no he produced it Re- oh, okay some some of the dude uh directed it but go ahead okay but um uh lawrence fishburne plays the exact same part in that movie that he did in um passengers where it's just like oh Oh, three quarters of the way through the movie, we found the guy who's been here the whole time and who understands what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to help us figure all this yeah. out. Actually, kind of guy. that part was written for Arnold Schwarzenegger. It was, was supposed yeah. to be Dutch, mm-hmm. and then they rewrote the character completely. And right. You could probably feel that a little bit. Like, when you, yeah. know right. it, when you watch it, like, oh, Because okay. you don't want... Well, yeah, it's the secondary character. You want to see another fucking movie. With well, him. that's the other yeah. thing too, you know. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, I mean, and I'm sure that's Arnold's take on I that whole thing. I think that's what he wanted. Yeah, right? yeah. When they offered him that, he's like. I think I'm above a cameo. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I think I'm above a cameo. All right. So um, the Meg is coming. It's a giant shark movie, I believe. Yes. The Megalodon. Yeah, I'm excited for this. All right. Giant shark movie. Who's in it? Jason Statham, Ruby Rose, uh, Rain Wilson. That's right. All right. Fucking uh, pikeys. August 10th. Great. Okay. Venom. <laughs> September 5th. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't care about a giant shark movie. Yeah. Yeah. It oh. sounds like uh, something you see on sci-fi. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Actually, no, because this was a book that's beloved kind of like Jaws for years. Yeah. A guy right. named Stephen Alton made, mm-hmm. and it's, you know, like a, a fucking cr- uh, shark from the Cretaceous area. Mm-hmm. It's the Cretaceous yeah. time. Yeah. It's going to be like the most biggest. Di- so it's a little shark. different than your average Sharknado yeah. fare. This is something Not a much. Bigger. Yeah. Not much it's to me. 70 foot long. Okay. Um, yeah. It's, it's a giant fish. Yeah. It's, it's a, giant a giant fish, fish. threat. Yeah. But like. It's a giant. whale with giant sharp teeth. No. I think the production values that they're putting into this are, are, are going to be well above. Oh, what uh, people are expect- yeah, yeah. What people are probably expecting yeah. for this kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. Like, don't dismiss well, it. Well, they're probably going to try and channel uh, Jaws. 
Well, and then, I mean, and then and then and then take it from there. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's right. you know, giant shark. All right, um, but it is a beloved novel. Yeah, yeah. it's got some background to it. Mm -hmm. It's you know, it's not just some random. Yeah. It ain't Sharknado right. versus well, Megasaurus. It's right. not some random mm -hmm. script that just fell out of some. You know, yeah, yeah. it's got some uh, teeth. A little bit, a little, a little bit. Oh. Oh. oh, oh, I heard Dominic. He's all the way over there. Teeth. Yeah. All right, so uh, hey, Dom, you ready for that Venom movie? It's got uh, Tom Brody in it. Oh, hi. Uh, I just came here to talk about Black Mirror. Um, oh, right. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> um, hi. Uh, uh, we got two more episodes to go on that. All I, right. I never got to the last two. Um, <laughs> hi. Yeah, anyway, hey. so uh, Venom's coming down the pike. Yeah. That's um, Tom Hardy and, uh, other, pe and other people. Right. Just, I mean. You know, we'll have to wait and see, but. Yeah, um, it's just uh, we're hopeful. Uh, yes. We're yes. hopeful. That's the key. Are we, though? Yeah, well, I mean, because they, they're not going to stop making it. <laughs> and yeah. at the very least, it's like, all right, well, they got Tom Hardy, and he seems like a guy who's kind of picky about his career. Yeah. And I yeah. kind of put some faith into the fact that, like, because he turned down, like, he's a guy who's interesting to see what he's turned down. Right. You know what I mean? Because some things he turned down, like, were, turned out well, but, like, you know, not because, probably because he <laughs> wasn't in them. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. So I, think, um, I think it's going to be... Weird to not see Spider-Man in there, but I think it can go either way. Like I think it could just flop totally and be a failure. Mm. I think that's the obvious, but I think it could also yeah. really surprise and end up being like a really artsy fucking. I think the nerd culture is gonna you know? milk it. You know, I mean, the nerd culture is gonna come out enough to keep this thing. Yeah. This thing is definitely getting a sequel. Yeah, like, <laughs> like you know what I mean. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, and you, you've got you've even got if it's trashed, even if it's trashed by critics. Mm -hmm. And you've got Tom Hardy, Michelle Williams, <laughs> Jenny Slate, Woody Harrelson, and Riz Ahmed. So, like, you've well, they got, got, Woody? They got Woody. They got the Woodster. Yeah. I guess maybe they locked it down, or we got yeah, I got the uh, IMDb. Yeah, I, I, I got the IMDb up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Quasi official. Yeah, I could definitely see him being a good Mr. Cassidy. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah, people keep going back and forth as to whether or not Carnage is going to be Woody or if it's going to be Riz Ahmed, mm. the guy from the Night of. Mm. Um, so, speaking of Marvel stuff, as we continue moving along, we jump to November when X Men Dark Phoenix is finally going to come out. Hmm. I feel like I'm almost. I feel like I'm kind of done with the X Men movies, man. I mean, this is this is their yeah. swan song. This is the last thing they could possibly do, right? Because this is Dark Phoenix. This is doing that story outright. The Shi'ar, the aliens, all this crazy stuff. Like, it's just another crazy big X Men story. I feel like it's. Overkill or something. Yeah, and <laughs> whisper louder, Dominic. Sophie Turner. Sophie Turner. Don't get me wrong. I love Sophie Turner. Mm. She's she's cute. She's a good looking kid. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, this is directed by Simon Kinberg, who, is for all intents and purposes, yeah. pretty much been like the Kevin Feige of the X Men movies for the last decade. Don't or so. you dare! Yeah, yeah that's a little a uh, little insulting to Kevin Feige. <laughs> I mean, no, no. Well, I mean, he's he's, he's the closest. Guy. He's the closest. Proxy. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I know. Yeah, he's, he's, no, no, no. he's been the guy riding all of these and guiding yeah. them through, he's, uh, he's, along yeah. with along with Lauren Schuler Donner. They are the um, two most consistent creatives yeah. in this whole process. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and maybe, maybe maybe he's to blame. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know? I think it's it's almost like I've worked so hard. I got the Deadpool and the Logan movie made. Right, this is right, my right. treat that I finally get to direct one of these. Um, <laughs> Let it be this uh, one of all. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, you know, the this is a product of the learning curve you know of a learning curve and uh it's going to be a, a, a much better movie than we've gotten in the past well then uh, this, uh, that brings us out of that and into december uh december is not really kind of looking too meaty well it's got a few things um spider-man into the spider-verse is the animated uh miles morales um marvel uh, project coming out of sony um it looked, that trailer came out. It looked pretty good. Yeah, it's got a very u got a very unique kind of style, animated mm -hmm. style and mm -hmm. color palette, very neon and bright. Um, but I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Um, yeah, yeah. I was kind of I'm impressed by it. And you know, what's interesting is that like it's gonna, you know, it's gonna serve all purposes of like who is the Miles Morales? How do we, you know, get people on board with that? Because it's like, it's a different Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. It's a different person. It's not Peter Parker. Right. Like, you know what I mean? And it's like, well, okay, we'll just get right into the multiverse stuff. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Spider-Man <laughs> goes sci-fi. And it's like, you know, if you've read the books, you're familiar. Yeah. You're like, you know why, all that. But it's like, oh, well, yeah. that's what they're going to bring to the main audiences. Okay. Fair enough. 
Hit them with everything. I'm up for it. Well, well, of course we are. Yeah. We can handle it. They're, they're worried that, I guess they're not worried mm -hmm. that uh, after everything that's happened with all these uh, comic book movies, that these people can, that the general audiences can handle, handle it. Yeah. I'd be curious too. All right. So then we got Mortal Engines, which was the craziest trailer I've seen in months. Um, if you're curious, just go watch the trailer. Um, it's one of these book adaptions. Um, that when I looked at the trailer, I kind of thought, well, that's a thing that only really works in a book. <coughs> uh, okay. Um, don't want to spoil it for anybody. I, I, to me, it was such a weird thing. It felt like a reveal. Um, but yeah, Mortal Engines. Uh, it's a thing that's been coming for a while. It's a beloved book series. If I knew that this was the hook, um, it's like, what? Um, so with that, um, I don't know. Um, See here, Palmer's throwing in a thing. Uh, same running team Peter Jackson had with the Lord of the Rings stuff. All right, so um, that won't save it. Okay, so that's December 14th. Mm. Aquaman, December 21st. I don't know. We, we got uh, it's, it's Aquaman. Mm. Yeah. Oh, they moved that to December? Well, yeah, that's what we got in this oh, listing I anyway. Well, I, maybe they think it's uh, okay uh, during the Star Wars month. Fair enough. You thought mm. it was November, you said? Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, no, no. You're right. They did move it. Okay. Well, whatever. I thought you were keeping track of these things, Ed. I am. Fuck, not really. Okay. Palmer got you on that one. Mm -hmm. So, uh... Yeah, <laughs> Aquaman. Just, we, so we get Palmer fight out in the document. We get Jason, <laughs> Mom Jason Momoa. We get to see more of Mira, and I hope she's more like Mira. Patrick right. Wilson is playing Orm. We got Willem Dafoe in this movie. Mm. So Willem Dafoe back in a, back in a superhero movie. Uh, and, you know, he kind in of... In the water. Yeah. Okay. No. Uh, mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I just kind of want to see something because it's mm -hmm. like I don't know. Man. Like regardless, I'm not even saying mm -hmm. because of like you know how Aquaman is kind of like it's mm -hmm. like the raw deal because of how he was previously portrayed. I just mean this project in general. Like, what is like you know, yeah. it's, you know. Well, wasn't DC's got you know got this whole track record and all that and yeah. that kind of stuff. You yeah. know, well, I, I got hope for it, but mm. well, it wasn't his appearance in uh, Justice League like a trailer for the Aquaman, Aquaman movie. Though? Well, basically, I mean, it gave us a good feel of like what to expect. You know, we got to see a little bit of it. Yeah, his underwater world, his personality obviously shown through. He's a big, boisterous kind of person. Yeah, you know, so there's mm -hmm. that. Yeah, he's uh, basically Thor in a wetsuit. Kind of. Um, so then we have uh, on the twenty first we got Bumblebee, which is the Transformers spinoff. That can go fuck itself. <laughs> See? There you go. Um, I think I think I'm gonna have to agree with Jay's sentiment. About fucking mm. time. Mm. Yeah, I don't think anyone <laughs> on, at this table has ever really gone out of their way to see a Transformers movie. Dom, Dom, Dom are you excited Dom, for a Bumblebee movie? Not in a while. Bumblebee Not in a while, solo anyway. movie. But, <laughs> um. <laughs> I haven't seen. Uh, <laughs> I did He's not that, sure. He's I not did sure. that intentionally. <laughs> I. Uh, <laughs> I um <laughs> haven't seen like the past three Transformers. Right, so right. Yeah. I guess you mm, know mm. whatever. But Bumblebee was like my boy, like because I was pr I was like kind of young when that first one came out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I kind of had like a thing for Bumblebee at that age. Oh shit! But um, I kind of <laughs> I've kind of lost it sadly. So I really don't care mm. anymore. I love Bumblebee yeah. tuna. You had a little thing for Bumblebee. Bumblebee tuna. Not like a thing, but like oh, you know, uh, it was like a. It was like a, a hero, a hero crush. Like you know uh, what I mean? Like, got you, got you, got you. You like? <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that was me. Yeah, I hit yeah. the you, one. you like the Camaro? I, I know what you mean, though. Well, he was a Volkswagen. And then it looks like they ha yes. they're going to have it in the movie too, because it's a it's going to be an era piece. It's going to be in the '80s, mm -hmm. and they released one photo from it, and it's got the the, the Volkswagen bug circa the era. See, in that so might the be the only charm to that movie. That's what I mean. If they do a thing where it's like fuck the other movies, let's just kind of do it's this yeah. thing. Like, much like they want to do a solo Joker movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's do a solo, out of continuity, Bumblebee movie. I hope it's a pleasant surprise for them. Yeah, because be, well, it, it, that'll be a pleasant surprise for us. The pitch is like, you know, yeah. you can go eat dog crap. Yeah. <laughs> Highfalutin over here. Highfalutin shit. You get, the, you get the point from Dominic. He's pointing at you. That's his sign of, I agree. You know? <laughs> this guy. What this guy said? No. Mm. Huh? I can't read pantomimes. Oh, okay. I'm no good at that. Get the pantomime. Pantomimes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Bohemian Rhapsody. Ooh. Does anybody care? I, I want to see that. Yeah. yeah. So this is Rami Malek playing Freddie Mercury. Yeah. Um, realizing it, it's funny seeing the first still of him as Freddie Mercury. You realize how stupid Sasha Baron Cohen playing Mercury might have been. 
I don't um, know, man. Like, <laughs> that was... Well, because, like, everyone was saying that for a while, because Sasha Baron Cohen looks exactly like Freddie Mercury. Right, maybe too much? Yeah. Mm. Well, is it just because, like, you know... Well, he's basically that, that overall build. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe not the skin tone, if oh. his uh, look on Mr. Robot is any indication, yeah. but... Mm-hmm. I mean, um, the only thing he's but, lacking but, is yeah, the you, you could definitely make him look uh, enough like Freddie Mercury to... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But this is also a movie that's kind of, like, crumbled under some weight. Yeah, that, that profile is like is like perfect, you know. But yeah. profiles uh, profiles are easy to duplicate. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, the thing is that this movie's got some issues going on behind the scenes. So who knows? Yeah, Br- Brian Singer was thrown off the movie after only a couple of weeks. Right. Um, uh, Malik had yeah. some arguments they, and stuff. They, they, he, he that, 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 that's actually interesting you say that because I just read something today that he's been kicked off Legion as well. Well, they, he he asked that his name be taken off because he's got all this stuff coming on, on to him because of all this uh, mm-hmm. sexual stuff, stuff with kids. He wanted to put young, Kaiser Soze young? into the film. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Kaiser Soze. We're going to fix this movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'm a Queen fan. Sure. You know what I mean? There's some early mm-hmm. thrash metal in Queen that right, kind of right, right. paved the way for me to listen to other things like Sheer Heart Attack and okay. that kind of yeah. stuff. So I, I give Queen the props they deserve. You know what I mean? And I'm always yeah. into music biographies. You know what I mean? Yeah. Usually, for the most part, they're better than okay. most. Fair so yeah. I'll, I'll take a look. Yeah, I'll, I'm actually a little interested in this, too, simply because uh, I think uh, he's going to do a pretty good job of this. And, you know, I'm, I'm a musician, so, you know. Well, speaking of musicians, is Tom Petty still in the, in the, in the chat room? Or is he no. free-falling no. somewhere else? No, no. Yeah, he he free-fell. Wow. Because he you followed us. Looking, he followed us baby. on the Mixler. I got the alert that he followed. I cool. found you. He, that's what he said when he, he found us. I found you. No, I think, I think he left. Yeah, he's out. He's joining right. He's with the traveling Wilbury. That's right. <laughs> he's doing the Wilbury travel. If half of them are dead, but. All right. Well, that's going to wrap up the 2018 breakdown. Mm-hmm. Wait, we got one more. You right? know, like Jeff Lynn? No, that's no, it. <laughs> that was it. Okay. Um, all right, so that was it. It was 30, and we're out. Hey. All right, it's email time. Let's jump right into it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dom Tory in the house. He doesn't even have headphones on, but he knows. He was grooving to it. So we got a really nice email we hear, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got some. We got, we got, we got two. You screened them? I I, yeah, I, was, I screened the emails this week. It was a little uh, pompous. Uh, wh- a little pompous. <laughs> I, 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 I did. I did. I got a little, a little bit. I got who, me? I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't, you know, accused of something or did something wrong. No, 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 no. Not, not in that way, mm-hmm. in any way, shape, or form. Can I have uh, just uh, an eighth of an inch <laughs> over here? <laughs> my right booze is my shit. right of my microphone. Like, I feel like I can't move it because of this wire and it made me nervous. A little scotch. It made me a little nervous. All right, the first email is coming from a guy named James O'Hare. Hey, Jimmy boy. Oh, that fuck. <laughs> it's, it's Ed's brother. My little brother. Little brother uh, serving his country uh, out of a base in Hawaii. Yep. In the uh, U.S. Oh, this isn't James Luciana? No, no, no. This is James O'Hare uh, from the oh, armed services of the Army. Look yes. at that. Yes. Very good. He is, he is, he is U.S. Army. So I love he, your dog. Ed can eat shit when he gives you dog shit. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. We like your dog. Well, he, yeah. the dog. he has the dog now. <laughs> well, well, I know. Right. But I just want him to know that he may not have heard previous episodes, where, but we, 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 we did. We know. We, we know the real truth, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> Take Wesley, tell him to get all the, all the uh, episodes where Ed talks shit about that dog, <laughs> and then put it on the make fucking a, DC TV report. I, make I, a best of. I think I only did it on air once. No. <laughs> no, no, you did not. Uh, okay, we, we talked about it at least twice. All right. So um, <laughs> let me get into this, because it seems that, like, now that your brother's serving, you know, he's got some downtime. Mm-hmm. Because not only has he listened to the Star Wars episode, he wrote an email. Yep. And he's he's a writer too, huh? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I, to be, I, he told me he was going to write an email. Right. I don't know anything about this. Right. So I don't know whose side he's taking or whatnot. But well, uh, I, I think I'm it's excited. a thing where, like, well, here's the thing. It is a long email. I am going to truncate some stuff out of this. Um, <laughs> but it's definitely a thing where it feels like he was listening along. Mm-hmm. Maybe t- at some points or whatever, and was really reacting to some of these things in the moment. Yeah. So the things yeah. he's referencing, we may not remember everything specifically. Um, but um, one of the, the great things is that like it's not all about like siding with anybody. Like by the end yeah. of it, it's like uh, I agree with this thing about that, and I agree with him about that. You know what I mean? So it's like it's like 
you know, he's got his own opinions as much as anybody else. Cool. So yeah. let's see how it starts out here. Dear Wicked, dear the Wicked Theory podcast, my brother Ed, and the other guys whose names I couldn't give two shits about. <laughs> <laughs> no, no offense. No offense. He, he sounds like my kind of guy. Uh, see, right there, <laughs> off the top. I well, write, he is a soldier. I write this letter having not yet finished your Star Wars The Last Jedi review, although I fully intend to finish. There's just too much info to wait. I want to say that I am not the biggest of a die-hard Star Wars fan, I'm more of a very above-average one. I know some, not much, of the expanded universe, but I'm dedicated to the movies and grew up playing the video games. Although I was raised in a Star Trek house, I'm not surprised to hear that, yeah. um, I always much preferred Star Wars, um, I, cl my, I clearly being the more mature, classy brother. <laughs> uh, having said that, let's get into it. So let me first say that I like this movie. Notice that I said I like this movie. Um, not that I like... Not that I said like I liked the Star Wars movie. Um, hold on a second. I got to scroll a little bit. It was an enjoyable film, but there are some major holes, and my buddy uh, Rain, uh, Ryan rather, has some explaining to do. And another thing, don't you dare play that he's just agreeing with Ed because that's his brother card. That's bullshit. I don't agree with anything with that guy on anything. Um, this, is, this is true. This is true. Anyway, the tone of the movie is a bit too comical, I think. I enjoyed it at times, but it was a bit of out of place at other times. The pro prank call thing was funny, but it did set a tone for the rest of the movie. In certain moments, it definitely fell out of place. Um, here comes my first major issue. When we see the girl reaching for the remote in the bombs, um, she attached her pendant, uh, pendant from Rogue One. That's bullshit. That's blatantly Disney trying to include stuff from the other movie. It was okay in Rogue One, but we've never mentioned it in the other episodes. Um, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. Moving on to the island. Um, I don't want to give, because he gets very spoilery. I don't want to, like, I, I know we're probably in a safe spot with giving away stuff about this movie by now. Yeah, but you can jump ahead a few minutes. <laughs> but, um, uh, okay. Uh, now, the Mary fucking Poppins. You can't defend this. You just can't. Maybe, oh. you know, uh, maybe she is force sensitive. I buy it. <laughs> but, you know, he gets into that a little bit. Um, uh, I lose track of this theory. He's got that debunks what we were saying, and I don't want to get into it because it's spoilery. Um, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. And then... Uh, Throw up a spoiler alert. Let's get into well, it. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's get into it from, from this guy. Okay. Well, um, you know, he's going to talk no, like it's that. It's, it's his it, brother's email. It feels like... <laughs> <laughs> it's official. All right, so... Um, so, Snoke. Who the fuck is Snoke? Snoke could have been a badass. We spent more time developing stuttering Joe's character than Snoke, and that's just disappointing. I wanted to know who he was and why the hell he's so powerful. Now... Even now, even uh, I do find out, and it doesn't really mean much because he got killed by a sideways lightsaber. I just wanted some more character development for Snoke. My last major issue was close to the end. Leia doesn't die. Well, she did, but then she didn't. And now she's on a ship and all that. But towards the end, when Luke is distracting Kylo and the First Order and Poe is leading the resistance away, they turn to Leia and she says something like, what are you looking at me for? It's like a clear passing of the torch uh, that Poe is in charge now. Um, but anyway, they had their chance. See, like he's very—he's going very stream of conscious. Yeah. Uh, in the moment of what referring he, to back to what things we were saying. What was he saying before about the Leia flying scene? Um. When he was so about uh, she could have. Uh, okay, so. Uh, she go, goes, you get, maybe she is force sensitive. I buy it, but she goes from only ever hearing and sensing these things to now she's space Jesus, which is a nice reference to uh, <laughs> the thing we say all the time. She, uh, space Jesus. She was dead. She could have stayed dead. I was cool with that. The lady is dead in real life, and it's not like she was crucial to the rest of the film. I don't think it would have been that difficult to cut her out. And in all honesty, regardless of whatever that shit's possible or not, it was kind of shot terribly. It looked like a joke to me. I could have been. It could have been done a little bit better. Also, you guys make a point that Leia is force sensitive simply because she has visions and she can sense Luke across the galaxy. To me, that doesn't provide proof that she's force sensitive. And I, this, I kind of disagree with him on this. Um, it doesn't prove that she is force sensitive. Um, that could be Luke using the force on her. For example, by your logic, anyone who has a Jedi mind trick used on them is force sensitive because they were influenced by it. And I don't think that's exactly what we were saying. Uh, perhaps Luke is able to force to use the force on her to let her know something is wrong or to guide her to him rather than Leia using the force to sense him. So he's just kind of throwing counter theories out there. Okay. And um, it's all fair and good because it's all just kind of really that's just speculation of, of side story theorization. Uh, so yeah... 
do you feel like that debunks our whole theory that the, she always had the force theory and everything? Which is fine, which is fair. Um, uh, so he says, like, you know, I get the timeline argument about the time frame, but he's like, that's kind of obvious, and it just feels like, hey, it's just a movie. So it's like, <laughs> why uh, don't get? And that's like, and I get it because that's a thing. Like you can get stuck on with a lot of movies. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, this time frame is bullshit. Like you know, and I get that too. Um, so now he goes. Now the last scene where the kid force chokes. Kidding. He force chokes the broom into his hand, and the stories of Luke are clearly spreading. That was cool. Mm -hmm. That may have been the best scene in the movie, honestly, and it got me excited for episode nine. Update. <laughs> <laughs> I finished the podcast, of course, and I just saw the film a second time. I take back most of what I said. It's a great movie, and it makes more sense now. I went into the movie initially expect expecting answers to questions and was upset. I didn't get them. Going in without those expectations gave things a much different feel. Anyway, great podcast, guys. I'll keep listening. Cool. I think that was a very important thing. Uh, right? cool. like the second viewing fucking, you know, mm -hmm. took that expectation pressure off. Yeah. And so he was able to kind of process things a little better. So specifically what he's rebutting yeah. back up in there. Yes. I don't know. So, yeah, well, he said he basically he said he enjoyed the movie more a second time. Yeah. Because he didn't go in expecting anything. Right. Right. Fair enough. So, uh, well, thank you, brother, for, for setting that in. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. And, um... For not like kind of doing a brother thing and trying to like to defend you outright, because that's cool. Because mm -hmm. fuck you, sink or swim on your own, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. That's what a real brother does. Yeah. Um, really. Just you know, you gotta you gotta get through life on your own, little man, and that's it. And you're out. That's it. You're pushed right off the bike. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So with that, um, the other email we got is from uh, Wesley, and then uh, he's got a little jam. Oh, that's sexy. <laughs> nice, perfect, perfect. Because I, because I changed it, I cut off the last note. <laughs> All right, so uh, he starts out, "Hey, you gentlemen." So uh, I have some news. What's going on, motherfucker? He says, I have some news. I start college classes on Monday. I'm sorry. Uh, depending on the road conditions, um, with any luck, I won't. It won't get in the way of making emails for the show. Because uh, I was. Thank you, Wes, because we yeah. were worried. Nervous. I got, I was, uh, did you see me? I sort of sweat. Um, so he wants to know, if you could own one weapon from a fictional world, which would you choose? And if I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Mm. Thank you for the email, Wesley. Uh, uh, the more wishes weapon, wherever that may be, in whatever world it's in. <laughs> you can't make up your own... <laughs> You said uh, your own fictional right, you guys, world. You guys go ahead. I got to think all about right, that All one. right, um, uh, Fictional weapon uh, from a fictional world. Mm. Mm. Cosmic cube. Does that count? That's not really a oh, weapon. Oh, wait, man. It can be used as a weapon, but it's not really a weapon. It's basically yeah. like a genie lamp. It is like, kind of like what Bob is saying. Give me something that I can just make wishes upon wishes with. Yeah, maybe that's a cheat. So I'll, I'll, I'll no. pull that out for myself. Let I me got me. Uh, the men in black. Okay. The flash. Oh, yeah. that'd be good. <laughs> Weapon. Not quite a weapon, but no. But you can use it like one. You could use it for evil. <laughs> oh, you could use that for evil. You can use it for anything. Yeah, it's it's not a physical like, mouse. I need cash. <laughs> yeah, there you, you go, do the, go into the vault. <laughs> yeah. I'm the dangerous thing because I make you forget whatever I just did to you. Um, yeah, physical weapon. I don't know. I kind of always. Yeah, what do you got there, D? Because I wasn't really. I was kind of stretching a little bit. The chainsaw gun from Gears of War. Ooh, ooh, that is pretty mean. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just take something simple. I'll take a nice the Tog knife, uh, which is the the Klingon knife that they have in Next Gen and Deep Space Nine. Not the, the big, yeah, cro not the big. No, 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 not not the battle. List. No, the it's, two it's the small one. No, gotcha. no it's, it's this the, is like a yeah, it's a the dagger. One you stick it in, and then you push a button, and then like the two wing blades uh, come yeah, apart just right, as you're pulling right. it out. Gotcha. It's so you just like tear someone's intestines mm, apart. Good times. Good times. Did I you like guys it. all see Black Mirror first episode of this season? Uh, yes, yes. We Could all did. Yeah, first episode. Could the computer be used as a weapon? Because <laughs> <laughs> in that case, then yeah. I mean, yeah, there so are I'll some examples. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that, that goes in a lot of ways too. Like, um, I guess um, just about any computer could be used for a weapon, so good. Um, especially with something that powerful. Mm -hmm. It's like Hal. You could use Hal from 2001 as a weapon. Uh, like a physical weapon. I don't know. You know what? That, that 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 Gatling gun from Predator is pretty fucking badass. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted one of those for a long time. That fucking you know that Jesse that's Ventura the, special. Yeah, that's like that's an M60. Yeah, like just M60 Gatling gun. Like that's pretty that's pretty fucking crazy. Um, 
then you know, just carry that around. <laughs> you know, just carry that around. Yeah, but see, then when you gotta have something that badass, you also gotta have theme music with you wherever you go to. Well, if I'm carrying that, I might as well put a fucking radio on my shoulder too. Yeah. Something that badass. Exactly. I'm thinking Darth Vader theme music. Mm. I'll just get the the theme. The Predator is actually pretty badass on its own. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, how about you, Jay? Uh, fictional weapon. What kind of uh, from a fictional? Uh, <coughs> well, the lightsaber's always been at the top of the game. Oh, but true, um, true, true. Um, you know, I always try making one in real life. Though. No, no, no. I I always liked the pulse rifle from Aliens. Okay. Um, uh-huh. that was just like the ultimate like gritty machine gun that looks like it can actually. It looks as real as anything else. Had like a grenade yeah. launcher attached mm-hmm. to it. You know what I mean? It's it marine. Had, it's marine issue. But I'm just saying that it, it's yeah. really just a cool weapon to yeah. have, and you just look badass when you're carrying it. And it, and it also looked like a chainsaw. You know what I mean? <laughs> so now, I, can, I can recall back mm. in the uh, like early '90s that this question actually mm-hmm. came up. They said if you can have anything. You know, what would you have? I always said that I wish that I could have Robocop's modified Desert Eagle. Oh, yeah, that's pretty sweet. You know what I mean? Because that's like a hand machine gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So I would have the pulse rifle with his modified Desert Eagle as my side. You're just fucking, you're just greedy, motherfucker. Yeah, dude, because I was, because I was, I wanted to. Desert Eagle, I wanted Desert to Eagle's take, a big gun. I wanted to take down Newark. <laughs> when I was well, with the Desert Eagle, yeah. you could do with the pulse rifle from the Desert Eagle. Between I could do some two. damage. Yeah, between the two, yeah. fifteen city blocks will be cleared yeah. before I go. I think down. as long as you have enough bullets, you just need the Desert Eagle. Bullet. Yeah, there yeah. you go. And a and lightsaber. Woo-hoo. You just like blow somebody's head off at close range. <laughs> <laughs> Bang! Yeah, I remember bullet to Tony's Desert Eagle point five zero. What? From mm. Snatch. Oh. Uh, it's like, oh, right, right. Bullet to Tony. Like, yeah, it's, he's got a great model. Right, right. right, uh, right. Oh, um, uh, was it Runaway with Gene Simmons, the gun that shoots around corners? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty. That was kind of crazy. Right. Or even like the, the guns they have now with the freaking that actually literally do turn the corner for you. Have you seen those guns? Where I've like, heard of them. It's like the front half of the rifle fucking bends and turns to the right degree, and you have a camera. That you can see around the mm. corner because it's mounted on the front half of the gun, and all of the firing mechanism is in that front half of the gun. So basically, you're just kind of like sticking this thing that just goes around, the, just just folds around the corner, <laughs> like so you can kind of like just pop up, pop up. It's crazy. I know a guy whose mom could do that with tennis shoes. I believe it. All right, folks, and on that one, we're gonna run out of here. We're gonna take a little break for anybody listening live. Stick around, don't go anywhere. Uh, we're gonna come right back. But uh, this is the end of this af- this is this show. Yeah. And we're gonna do, do the after show. So, like, I don't know. What am I doing here? Am I recording this by accident on this device? I think so. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, sorry here, folks. I got distracted. Um, Let's give out the Twitter handles. Yeah, let's do that. What's yours? I'm at Urban O'Hare TBD. Oh, shit. What about you, Jay? (laughs) You have? Uh, I am still a <laughs> man of steel books because uh, it's working, but that's, that's uh, fine. I, I will, I will change it to Uncle Jay's thing. And, At some uh, point. On a side note, just mm. want to send a special shout out to mm. my muse, Miss mm. Joe Gagliardo. Oh, ooh. all right, absolutely, very, very cool. All right, and then Dom what about underscore you? Tory that, on Twitter. That's you. And what about you? At Bob WTPC. Very cool. I'm at Wicked Theory. The show is at wickedtheory.com, but it's also found on uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, all that good stuff. Um, you know, take a look. Come and find us. We're at uh, wickedtheory.com as well. And like I said, check out the YouTube channel, man. Uh, try to build that up. Give us a su- subscribe on that sucker. Um, and then, like, you know, we'll post content. Mm. You know? If you come, I will produce. And yeah. I, don't worry, I will produce to try oh, yeah. to get you to come. Mm-hmm. That sounded. That sounded bad. No, that's the. Old that's, that's that's. Oh, that's disgusting. Yeah, that's, Bill. yeah, that's not good. That's Bill, not good. Bob, take us be, out of here quick. We got yourself. Yeah, I am. Usually, not even this time. Bob, make it stop. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there we are, baby. podcast is heard live every Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern until whenever. Just go to Mixler.com slash Wicked Dash Theory. Mixler is M-I-X-L-R. Sign up to join the chat. Then click the follow button to get reminders whenever the show goes live. You can find the show on iTunes, Stitcher, 
Google Play Music, wherever good podcasts are given away for free, and at wickedtheory.com. You can support the show at patreon.com slash wickedtheory. There, you can get the after show if you miss it live. God forbid. Plus other exclusive episodes. As always, send your emails to podcast at wickedtheory.com. <laughs>